It's time for Mac Break Weekly, episode 214. Merlin Mann is here. He brought along an actual iPhone developer. Alex Lindsay and Andy Anotko, too. We'll talk about the latest Mac news next on Mac Break Weekly. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for MacBreak Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is MacBreak Weekly, episode 214, recorded September 28, 2010. Hijacked by the Bieber. MacBreak Weekly is brought to you by Go to My PC. For those of you who work around the clock, access your files and applications around the clock too with Go to My PC. For a free 30-day trial, visit go to mypc.com slash MacBreak. And by Drobo, the original S Pro and the new Drobo Elite, offering expandable storage products for individuals, small businesses, and creative teams. For more information and instant rebates, visit drobo.com slash MacBreak. And by Audible.com. To download the free audiobook of your choice, go to Audible.com slash MacBreak. It's time for MacBreak Weekly, episode 214, and we've got a massive, ginormous panel of people starting up in the uh, upper left corner to block Alex Lindsay from thepixelcore.com and pixelcore.tv for his podcast. Where are you today, Alex? It looks like you're teaching a class or something. <laughs> we can't hear a word Alex is saying. And apparently, he can't hear me either. <laughs> <laughs> he can hear me, but I can't hear you. The turtle called Gamera is can a hear me now? Is it Yes. Yeah. So, uh, oh boy, the lip sync's terrible. My lip sync's terrible? Well, it's okay. I can live with it. Wait a, minute, okay. wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's start over again. All right. <laughs> <laughs> when we're only 30 seconds into it, I reserve the right. Normally, we don't do this. Okay. It's time for Mac Break Weekly, the show that covers all your Apple needs, from soup to nuts and everything in between. And a massive panel today, starting in the upper left-hand corner, Alex Lindsay to block. Hello, Alex. Hey, how's it going? From the Pixel Core. Are you teaching? What are you doing today? You're not here. I'm getting ready. I'm, fl I'm flying out tomorrow morning to Tokyo. And so I am uh, getting ready for that. And we're filling out what's called a carnet, which means that we can take all of our gear with us uh, to Japan. And so uh, I'm kind of in the middle of that. And I wasn't able to be in Petaluma and then be down here at the same time. Yeah. So, carnet, so I'm stuck in the office. Carnet is like for customs benefit. So you can yeah, when you're taking, you know, $30,000, $20,000, dollars worth of equipment in and out, customs wants Yikes. to know, wants you to check in and check out. <laughs> Out, or yes. they get paranoid. The lovely chortle of Mr. Andy and not go from the celestial waste of bandwidth and, of course, the Chicago Sun-Times. Tody Fields Brazier. <laughs> oh, we, we, we still doing Center, Hollywood Square? Center Square to block. Paul Lind. <laughs> Tony Fields. No, I, I believe Canada gets more <laughs> rainfall than South America, Jack. And uh, let's see, moving right along to the lower right-hand corner, a newbie on here, Justin Williams. He's with Second Gear Software at secondgearsoftware.com. And uh, two of his programs have been picked, uh, one on Mac Break Weekly, the Today program, the To-Do List program. And on iPad today, I picked Elements, which was text editing powered by Dropbox, just updated, by the way. Great software. He also does Markdown Mail, which looks really cool for the iPhone. And check off a To-Do List a simple to-do list program for the Mac. Hello, it's great to have you, Justin. Welcome to the uh, program. Thank you for having me. I've been growing my developer neck beard all week for this. <laughs> you, you need to work a little harder on that. Secondgearsoftware.com. Yeah. We did. We wanted to, This was actually Merlin Man suggestion. Merlin Man in the Hi. lower right-hand corner. Hello, Merlin. Hi. How are you? I'm very happy that you had Justin on. He's a, he's a he's a very smart young man. You suggested, I think, quite rightly, that we are always talking about developer stuff, but we never have an actual developer on the show. <laughs> so it probably is a good idea to actually ask somebody who's writing software. How long have you been developing for the Mac, Justin? 
Uh, I started back in 2006 when I graduated from Purdue, and I, I wasn't much of a student, and I didn't really go to too many job fairs, and I graduated, and it basically seemed, well, I know how to do this software development stuff, so let's just file those LLC papers and get to developing. Good so I've been you. doing it since then. A lot of people, I, mean, I just saw an article about uh, the decision between uh, iOS and Android now. Ever cons uh, does that come up for you? Is it... Do you start to look at with with a longing at the the, the growing, fast growing Android platform at any point? I don't look at it longing, but I I keep track of all the platforms because I'm. Well, I started doing this the Mac development, and then I moved on to iOS, which really has paid off. I am interested in the other platforms. Android, I've tested a, the waters a little bit with development, but I just I never liked it. I kind of like WebOS with the Palm stuff, but ah, they really don't have the market share. Yeah. But I am, I'm interested in uh, Windows Phone 7, and I'm hoping to see what the BlackBerry tablet has to offer as well. HP says it's going to print a, a, a ship, what was it, like 1.2 billion <laughs> Palm OS, WebOS printers. Printers! Yeah, I don't... I don't really want to develop for printers, but if they come out with a new Palm Pre or something like that, I might look into it. I'm sure they will. Can we help you, Merlin? It seems like he's dialing the phone. I don't know no, why. No, that are wasn't you, me. Are no, you calling no, for I, help this early in the show? My, my don't don't you use... <laughs> Get me out of this! Are you calling your agent saying, who booked I, me? I didn't touch anything. Why are you looking at me? Did who booked out of me on this show? <laughs> I think it was actually me. Aha! Uh -huh. I don't know what I was doing though. I I I I was going to a, to look at a, a web page, getting ready for the next story, and I clicked it and and see. Oh, I get it. I, I don't get know it. Why. Sorry about that, Merlin. I apologize. It was you me. May, you may remove the scarlet letter from your vest. I won't do it anymore. Scarlet Octothorpe. <laughs> All right, let's talk. Let's talk stories, news. Uh, yesterday, in fact, we covered it live. I was very pleased to say that. Uh, uh, RIM announced it's going to do a tablet PC. They call it the business tablet. This is to compete with the iPad, obviously. Won't be out till next year. Won't even run, oddly enough, BlackBerry OS. They call it the Playbook. Seven inches. Does have multi-touch. It's using a oddball OS that they recently acquired. I, maybe I shouldn't call it oddball. I'm just not familiar with it. Um, and uh, it's going to be interesting. It's going to have Flash. They say the full web. That's code. Did, did they did they give us a price? They did not give us a price, to my knowledge, unless somebody knows mm, better. I wonder I was, why. I've been looking all day and haven't found even a hint of it. Ten twenty four. No, they're not going to offer a price yet. Well, which is smart because if they're if they wanted to offer a price now, when it actually comes out, they're going to be competing with the next generation iPad, and who knows what that's going to cost. Uh, next point. generation iPad, HP WebOS tab, uh, and probably two others that are been announced but haven't shipped yet. Interestingly, though, it does not ship with 3G. It ships with Wi-Fi, but it will pair to a BlackBerry phone with 3G. That, that's one of the smartest things, though, and one of the least expense ex expected, because one of the things that Samsung and other makers are being kind of hung for is the fact that they are looks like they're not offering Wi-Fi only edition, so that it's not just right. a $400 thing. It's a $400 thing that comes with a two-year contract, and one of the things they're really going to have to compete with is the idea that if you're uh, you're trying to convince someone not to buy a $499 iPad that you own free and clear and no other commitments. So that's very smart on their part. It will have dual cameras, 3 megapixel front facing, 5 megapixel rear facing, supports 1080p HD video recording. That can't be right. That's got to be upscaled. I think that's by the HDMI output. I don't believe that's true. No recording. playback, yes, but but it says recording right here. I'm looking at the specs. It's probably through the camera. The camera could do 1080p. Doesn't I mean, it's doing all kinds of. I mean, It'll when you look upscale. at any of the you, 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 little flips and all those other stuff. I mean, you know, there's, yeah, they're they're even upscale. they even they don't well, they don't bother the 1080. They usually just go straight to 720. 720p. This says I'm saying you can scale it to anything you want and call yeah. it 1080p. I mean, there, there's that's no real standard on. to the standard. That's what I think's going on. It, I mean, anyway. Audio uh, for MP3, AAC, and Windows Media. HDMI video output, as you said, Andy. Bluetooth 2.1 and EDR. Micro HDMI, micro USB. Um, WebKit. I like so this. I'm going to have to start making those micro HDMI cables because those are still made manufactured from the unobtainium mines of Upper Vermont. I have one. <laughs> yeah. I bought one when I bought my... Um, my Droid X, I bought one because the Droid X also has micro, U uh, micro HDMI. And it's nice because uh, there's a little app for the... <laughs> I'm sorry, I do this every time. I hate Android. Moving <laughs> on. <laughs> there's a little app on the Droid X that lets you get HDMI out of anything on the screen all the time. 
But no, do, do any of you actually have, looking at this playbook, are any of you interested in buying one today? Now, Leo, no. I think you'll buy one just because you buy everything. No, I wouldn't buy one today. Buy one? I don't even want to, you know, I didn't buy the streak, uh, the Dell streak. I should have because it's, you know, that's, I, I, I was really looking at this at the Samsung. Didn't buy, I should have. Uh, you know, the iPad is, is so great. Now they're similar. Well, any well, see, asking well, this crew if they're going to buy it is not relevant because, like me, we're reviewers. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I just think that's going to be a good test of two different things. Number one is seven inch. Is a seven inch tablet going to be just as attractive as ten inch? But also, is the App Store really as important as a lot of Apple people and a lot of pundits are making it out to be? Uh, already, I've got uh, I've heard from Amazon saying that they're definitely coming up with a Kindle app. Isn't that interesting? On day yeah. and date, right? Yeah. There are a couple other different app developers. Uh, the biggest uh, book reading app for Android has said that they're making a version of it. Uh, they'll run on this on this book. Maybe it's it's not necessary to have two hundred thousand apps so long as you have just the 12 that are that people deem important as long as dropbox makes a dropbox app fill in the blanks for three other or four other services that's going to be another big test if a year from now it turns out that the biggest asset that apple has is not really as important as we all thought it becomes a much wider playing field who's, Some, who's been waiting for this though like for whom is this the answer to a question I mean, well, we said so that much, about the so iPad too. Cry about netbooks. Oh gosh, we got these in the netbooks. So who would ever want an iPhone, or who would ever want a, an iPad? I'm not trying to sound like a partisan, but anybody who wants an iPad can get an iPad. Anybody who wants a netbook can get a netbook. Um, I, I, I'm genuinely asking, like, who's? Is it just that this is more hackable? I mean, like, BlackBerry, like, BlackBerry owners, maybe. Yeah. yeah. See, I, I looked at the, the video, and the video of it was actually the the video I saw it up on Gizmodo was actually intriguing to me. It looked the the OS looked like a bit of a mix between WebOS's card metaphor for multitasking and a little bit of iPad. Now, obviously, this is a two minute video, so you can't say how good it is in daily use. But it was intriguing enough that I want to keep up with it. And I went on their site and I signed up to get access to what they're I think they're calling it the WebWorks SDK they have. Not to say that I'm ever going to build anything for it, but I'm actually intrigued by the other pla tablet platforms just because I want to see others have tablets out there so that Apple doesn't just take the entire market for themselves. Well, and I think I wonder, for me, I think the thing is, is, is I'm hoping that with this new OS, they're going to see a much better uh, interface. The touch screens on the, the past BlackBerry stuff has not been compelling. Oh, yeah. The, 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 what is it? The Storm? Those things are awful. Yeah. Yeah, they've got the Storm 3 still trying to make that compete with the iPhone, and they haven't succeeded at all yet. It's just, it seems, I mean, I don't want to say This is I, I smaller, anything, though. I don't know anything um, about the technology or the business, so as usual, I'll talk out of my butt, but it sounds a little bit risky to put, this seems like to make this thing as responsive and as fast, I mean, we all know what went into the iPad to make it like that. Um, it just seems like this, this was going to require some tremendous cycles in terms of development. It's going to take a lot of resources to make this thing awesome. They acquired and, a I new mean, OS for this particular use. The people, the people I know who have Blackberries have it for a pretty specific reason. Right. I mean, in some cases, it could be just because of maybe security or whatever. But a lot of times, you know, Blackberry users are, are a certain, I don't want to stereotype, but I mean, they are very much very task-driven really more like Google people than Apple people in some ways. They're very yeah. task-driven. They're not really into sitting in, and even if they fiddle, they do it very efficiently. This you know is, what I mean? I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit worried about this video, though. I mean, you don't see a real device doing right. anything for real. This is 100% right. mock-up. Right. And this even the like Notion Inc. people who did the... You will, yeah. like Blue yeah. Sky Solution hearing I mean, stuff, right? Even the Notion Inc. guys, they had a working Atom to show off uh, a year ago. Uh, and so that at least says, okay, they've definitely figured out some of the engineering. More importantly, they have held one of these things in their hand, and they know how well the software works when you have it in, a st like a, in your hands like a steering wheel. So I don't think that's necessarily a... Uh, an alarming thing, but I would be a lot more interested if they at least had a flash of somebody who was really using something they'd actually built at this they're, stage. They're clearly they're, they're clearly uh, um, uh, positioning this for business, right? I mean, this is this is I think so. this is. Uh, yeah. I wonder if the feeling among uh, Rim and a lot of other companies is not, uh, you know, it's risky, but it's risky if we don't do it. It's it. Mm. Apple, I think it's, it's risky if they appear not to do it. That's what I, that's kind of what I'm getting at. Is I wonder if this is I mean, again I I don't I have no idea, but it just it's just that's a tremendous amount of development effort to make something that in Apple's case it was a no in retrospect people maybe perhaps finally admit that it was kind of a no brainer, uh, including me. Uh, I didn't see it as a no brainer at the time, but well, now that's right. I mean, we said the same thing. Don't forget, right. we said who needs this? But as a fit for Apple users, that's a pretty different thing than for for the kind of well, yeah, because Apple users will buy anything. <laughs> Um, also, just because we we enjoy it's that, that famously Catholic experience right. of, of, yeah. So right. go ahead, Andy. Sorry. 
Uh, no, uh, you're you're making a perfectly good point. Uh, the only, the only, I mean, it's uh, there, there are so many d different devices where you can't really the only the only way you can explain why you need it is to simply say here, uh, and then people can really suss out whether or not there's a hole in their life that is exactly this shape, size, and width. Um, it's 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 an interesting announcement. I think they're just trying to get people to not make a purchase over the holidays that they might have been ready to make. Ah. Like they're, they've, been, they've been waiting for six months to say, you know what, yeah. I'm buying a couple iPads for Christmas. But now that we, we have no pricing, we have no physical object right. that they're showing off. Also, the only release date they're giving is sometime in 2011. It could be so December. I think yeah, I think this is like the chess move that says yeah, yeah. I don't I don't I don't need my piece to be in this spot, but I just want to make sure no one else takes this spot on the board. Media coverage. But do you think of this is a consumer? Oh, sorry, go ahead. Moving on. Media coverage of Apple found to be shocking, overwhelmingly positive. The Pew They're Research. Not, <laughs> not here. Not here, my friend. The Pew Research <laughs> Center on Monday released the findings of a new study analyzing tech journalism in 437 stories from a variety of sources from June. Uh, first through 30, uh, 2009 through 30th of 2010, the study found that Apple receives the most press in the mainstream media, 15.1% of all technology stories in the news, even though Apple's represent, I don't know, X percent of computers out there. Google came in second with 11.4%. Then Twitter, you want to say over coverage, Twitter, 7% of coverage. Facebook, only 4.8%. Microsoft, 3% of coverage. <laughs> Of well, the, this is even better. Of stories analyzed, 42%. Almost half described Apple as, quote, innovative and superior. 27% praised the company's loyal fans, as we just did. I just did. Only 20% of stories about Google portrayed the search giant as having innovative and superior products. Well, I just want to say that, you know, for all the people that have been complaining about us, it's just everybody's doing it. It's not just us. Well, everybody. this is a Mac show. This is an Apple show. We have to cover Apple. It's just our job. We don't, you know, and the complaint that you sh we should be addressing is that people who say, why does Windows Weekly talk about Apple? <laughs> that's, that's the real question. But does, Apple gets all this press because people go and click on the links that are about Apple stories. Right. If people were clicking more links on Microsoft you stuff, bet. people would write about it a lot more. That's what seems kind of obvious to me. Yeah. And obvious, I think that the, they're getting the praise because... You can't really find too many people that are going to say the iPhone is not a really great product. Well, let me ask Andy, as, a, as, as, an, as somebody who's actually a, a member of the uh, the actual newspaper <laughs> press corps, um, are you charged, Andy, with Apple coverage or with general tech coverage at the, the Chicago um, Sun-Times? I'm, uh, I'm general tech. I'm, so, I'm sort of like the Roger Ebert for technology. Not okay. <laughs> the, 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 the beat, not the, not the quality, of course. And I would guess uh, the preponderance of stories you do are about Apple. Uh, well, a lot of them are only because uh, I try to choose things that I think are, for lack of a better word, newsworthy. So uh, you agree with Justin? Third, yeah, it's there, there. There are two things that there are two things that, that, from my perspective here, when Apple comes out with a new te with an iPad, it is a brand new thing we really haven't seen before. Apple has a really great track record of breaking new ground, and so I'll write a column not only about the event in which they release it, but also will, of course, write my usual eighteen thousand words about it uh, as soon as it's uh, released and I've had some time to play with it. Uh, if Dell wants to give me their, their they, if they send me a press release saying that we now have the the Dell XJ1 Model Three, which is not to be confused with the XJL Model Three Four, which is a Office Max only release. Uh, it's okay. It's a Windows notebook. It has specs that may or may not be different from another model that I saw last month. Uh, it doesn't really break any new ground. Sometimes it is a challenge, though, to make sure that you have that that wide spectrum uh, of interests and items. Uh, as a, I, I, the column is going to be things that are are interesting me. Uh, to a preponderance of everything else, but I have to make sure that I balance that out. I'm just glad to see that there's a BlackBerry tablet that looks kind of interesting. There's a Dell tablet coming out. Uh, Notion Inc. is something that I'm following a lot because they seem to be positioning themselves very well as a tablet that's not necessarily an iPad, but seems to have figured out how to do an Android tablet really, really well. Uh, so, again, if you, you got to make news in order to get a news person to, to write about you. Oh, well, just, one, just, one last thing. Apple will actually, you know, help you out with an article, not by... You know, you have to kiss their butt, but Unless. they will actually give they will actually give you information, and it will not if you ask them for, for a review unit to have like and your deadline is in two weeks. They will not make you wait two months before they even reply to an email. Unless you're a college kid, <laughs> In which case Steve Jobs <laughs> yeah, will personally. I have an assignment, and I wanted to give you a personal interview. I only need an hour of your time. 
You, that's not too valuable, is it? This portion of uh, Mac Break Weekly brought to you by our friends at Citrix. Go to my PC, my friends. Many of us, our jobs aren't just from 9 to 5, you know. We work around the clock. An idea comes to you. You want to, you know, get to work on it. Do something about it, even if it's 4 in the morning. But, you know, sometimes the problem is you're home. The office computer is at the office. Or maybe you're traveling. Or maybe you just want to go home early and sit by the pool and get some work done. That's what Go to My PC is for. It means you can get to your office computer, or, any, or you know, whatever computer you put it on, anytime you want, anywhere you can get online. Even if it's a PC at the at the office and you've got a MacBook at home or vice versa. Go to My PC means you get what you need to do done wherever or whenever the mood strikes you. You can access your office or home computer and all the files and applications from wherever you are, no matter where you are, as long as you can get online. Even from an internet cafe, because it's 128-bit SSL, so you don't have to worry about security. You can run any program, access any network resource. You can send and receive email. I, this is what I liked. I used to like to do. I don't have to do it anymore because I'm the boss. I bet this is what my employees do. They would go, they'll go home, but then log on to the office computer and send an email, you know, like at 7, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8 p.m., 9 p.m. It looks like they're late at work, but really they're not. They're just messing with me go to my pc you can mess with your boss too go to mypc.com slash mac break you could try it free for 30 days go to mypc.com slash mac break 30 days free we thank Cetrix so much for their support of mac break weekly leo laporte here with andy and notco alex Lindsay, the lovely and talented merlin man i'm trying to poke you in the ear right oh, there ow 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 ow, ow. Merlin, if you stand up, it'll look like your, tor your torso is actually Alex's because you're wearing the same shirt and you're positioned in about the same right way. Oh, let's see. Here we go. Oh, no, we're that guy. Oh, that's weird. <laughs> oh, that's so stupid. For those of you not watching at home, how does that feel, Alex? You enjoying that? Mmm. Mm. Oh, yeah, here we go, Alex. Ready? Mm. Okay, Alex, Alex, Alex. Can <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, 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 anyway. 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 <laughs> Are you That's what I do here. I try to keep Alex? things moving. I wasn't long. fast enough. It was uh, here, the problem was I was looking in the wrong screen, and I I just didn't. Hey, try it again. I'll get out of the way. Maybe yeah, I was ready. in the I'm way. Ready. I'm ready, Merlin. This time oh, I'm ready. God. It's done. Leo, Leo, step. And Justin Williams is wondering what the <laughs> oh he's gonna do it. Wait a minute. Oh look. Oh that's creepy. There you go. That's freaking creepy. Yeah, that's disgusting. <laughs> All right, <laughs> All right everybody. welcome back. Yeah, yeah thank you back. Welcome you. back. Yeah. Justin Williams is here from Second Gear Software dot com. Wondering what the hell he has gotten himself <laughs> into. I, you know, my deepest. Apologies. Are we gonna have a chance to talk about Justin's app? Because I want to, I want to pummel all of my feature requests at him in front of lots of people. Uh, which one today? Yeah, we don't have to today. But you know, he makes some really cool. No, apps. the program. No, oh, the is, they, this, this is, is turning what, into this is a... the worst thing about naming an app today <laughs> is that you have. Is, is like my app is called today. Is when do you want to today? talk about no, it? It is today. <laughs> do you want to talk? Base. But when? when but let's talk about it today. It's baseball yeah. player. It's got a lot of crazy names. <laughs> you did that on purpose, didn't you, Merlin? Man, see, he's he's always thinking. Always. What's thinking. the name of your project manager? What app? No, app. No, the app you run. Go, go, go. I just ordered one, and you can too. Apple TV shipping. Although if you order today, ships in two to three weeks. So there's a little bit of a supply issue. But uh, we are hearing. From the internets that uh, people are getting their email saying your Apple TV is on its way to you. Andy, you got yours yet? Uh, I really can't say uh, yes or no. That's a yes, by the way, just <laughs> so you know. he did. We have a little trick. He does this thing and then the thing and the thing. So they won't let you talk about it yet? Oh, he can't uh, even say that, I, can I he? My, I'll, I'll, I'll repeat my boilerplate. Uh, as, an ongoing, as an ongoing basis since... Pre iPad, whenever there is a question asked of me whether or not I have a pre release product that I may or may not have, my answer will always be I cannot confirm or deny that. If it's possible that I actually don't have one, but I'm trying to throw you off for the next time that I do have it, it's possible that I do have it and I can't talk about it. By the way, Andy was also at bin 38 last week, colluding with those angels, <laughs> super angels. <laughs> Uh, here's an interesting little... Uh, <laughs> I was, yes, I was bussing tables for tips. <laughs> big, big tipper, that Arrington guy. Here's an interesting uh, story. Apple, uh, for the first... You know, they, they released the remote app ages ago. Uh, they have updated it. Apple Remote 2.0, now updated. Uh, if, you, if you use this, it's a great little app. Uh, in fact, we talked about it because uh, it was kind of interesting that only there was there's one guy who worked on it, and he's moved on to other things, so they hadn't updated it in a, in a year. Uh, you can control iTunes and 
your Apple TV. Now uh, works on iPhone, uh, as always, iPod Touch, I iPad, yeah. uh, Retina displays. Now uh, shared libraries and iTunes and the new and the new Apple TV. So this is good. They needed to do this before the release of Apple TV. It, it's it's pretty hot. I was using it this morning on my iPad, and not only does it really make you think that you're actually looking at your iTunes window on your iPad, I started something playing just from the standard collection of playlists where I would normally find them, and then there's no no noise coming out of my computer next to it on the on the desk. I think, oh God, what's muted now? Nope, the iPad is muted. Nope, this isn't muted. Oh, what have I done wrong now? It was smart enough that the volume control set in the iTunes app, whatever it is, in the uh, in the remote app designates what the volume of the iTunes app on the laptop is going to be. So the fact that the little slider in the iTunes window on my iPad was set to zero overrode whatever wow, was set on the neat. other one to make sure there would always, uh, that's that's just well that's done. That's nice. Clever. That's really nice. Really yep. That's how and already it, we have people complaining that they're using the same bland-looking iTunes icon as iTunes 10. They are. they are. It's a helicopter that folds into a briefcase. You're complaining about the color. Ooh, it's foam leather. <laughs> it's a helicopter that folds into a briefcase. <laughs> TV executives weighing in on the 99-cent rentals. Uh, Viacom chief executive Philippe Dormont. At the Goldman Sachs conference says, it doesn't work for us. He probably said it like this. It doesn't work for us. It is stupid. It is, uh, we are not going to do it. Viacom uh, owns cable networks like Comedy Central and Nickelodeon. He says, we spend a lot of money. <laughs> we value our content a lot. We don't think Apple has it quite right yet. On the other well, hand... Not only <laughs> Ahead, is this your Doug? Is this your Doug? Is your Doug <laughs> Bates? It's, it's like the Disney World. It's a small world, after all, of like culturally insensitive voices today. Isn't it? I love it. I did get an email from. A, I did get a very, very angry email from a Russian who said it, your your uh, depiction of Russians, which is basically a ripoff of Boris Badenov from Rocky and Bullwinkle. Your depiction of Russians is racist, and I have unsubscribed to all your podcasts. <laughs> Okay, get, getting back to Apple TV. Oh, yes, I got, okay. I got, I, got, I, got, well, I, I only want to interrupt because I got a really interesting uh, email from Roku uh, about like 20 minutes. Oh, yeah. I was going to say 20 minutes into, into the show, but actually 20 minutes before we actually, 20, 20 past two and 20 minutes before we actually started recording. Exactly. Uh, uh, and so announcing a deal where uh, Hulu mm -hmm. Plus will be available mm -hmm. to all mm -hmm. Roku mm -hmm. box owners mm -hmm. starting this mm -hmm. fall. This was so rumored. That, That's exciting. And, and that, that includes NBC content, that includes Fox content. So when they say, oh, we're examining the issue, but our numbers are uncrunched the way that Apple, they're saying, no, we really think this 10 bucks all you can eat is really the way we want to do it. Now, that doesn't include Viacom, does it? I don't believe it requires... No. Uh, you I'm, can I'm watch, wait a minute, you can watch the uh, Daily Show on uh, Hulu, can't you? I think you can. Uh, NBC shows, list, list, list. Uh, Fox shows, like Glee, Family Guys, The Office, 30 Rock, X-Files, Law & Order, Arrested Development, SNL, Miami Vice. Ooh, Miami Vice, yes. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Your Miami so, Vice is already on Netflix. Crockett and Tubbs. All of it. Crockett and Tubbs. And so they're not Tubbs. They're not charging you on the vices. No. But that, that, that is interesting. How I mean, about Mad Men? I do not know. That's A and E, but uh, that would be nice. AMC. Yeah. But I, the, I think they. I think they AMC, should. Viacom. Sorry, thank you. I think Viacom should get the money while while it's still there. Yeah, right. You know, I think that the, the, the issue whatever. is you know get those ninety nine cent. You know they might add up to at least enough for a couple cups of coffee. I mean right. I think that the the real issue that that I think a lot of these content companies haven't really grappled with yet is the fact that I think that you know content its value for sale or any of these other things is is going to go away. I mean, it's you know, the problem that you have is you have someone like me who's got 400 things on my Netflix. If Mad Men isn't available, I'll wait until it is. Right. You know, and, and so, you know, I got plenty to watch. I got more than I, I got more than I can watch in a lifetime on my Netflix right now. Less, and that's a, that instant access is going to is, is going to kill the industry. Less, and, and it, it kill a certain part of it. Sorry. I'm sorry. sorry. I'm moving it along only because Andy's going to, we got to get rid yep, of Andy in yep, about 45 yep. minutes. So I'm trying to get the yep. show in. Yeah, jam this entire fabulous show into a mere four or five hours of content. <laughs> Les Moonves, CEO of CBS, says, well, what we said to them and the Apple guys are terrific. And obviously the application is terrific. Uh, so it, we let us, let's see what happens. Moonvis said. I'm, this is a direct quote, folks. I'm not making this cup yeah. this up. There are two networks in and two networks not in. Let's uh, let's see what happens, and maybe we'll talk again in January. Maybe we'll talk again next year. That's what he said. 
This is a quote. The senator has withdrawn from the re-election <laughs> campaign, announcing a desire to spend more time with his family. <laughs> I, uh, okay, that's not the real, that's, that's the line they came up with because they didn't want to say, yeah. oh, it's on, it's on like Donkey Kong. <laughs> okay. Uh, so you think your opinion, Alex Lindsay, is that these guys are whistling through the graveyard. It's over and, uh, you know, we don't really care what they do. Yeah, it's not, not tomorrow. But I mean, I think that the thing is, is I think that when we look at the trajectory, I think one of the big challenges for the music industry is not just that people are pirating their software. It's that people like me have an entire iPod full of all the music that we've, you ever know, that we buy. ever listened to in our entire lifetime. <laughs> ever will buy ever again. We're done. No, if, if, if something play, really stands out, radio? it's fine, but I'm not looking for radio stations anymore. Right. Have you played with that? I guess that's how you pronounce it. R-D-I-O. Have you played with that? I like R-D-I-O. I recommended it a couple of times. How do you pronounce it? You say radio? R-D-I-O. They don't want R-D-O. it. It's R-D-I-O. R-D-I-O. Weirdly um, enough. Yeah. I, I think that, that that's the app that I got. So basically, it's, it's, it's uh, $10 a month. All you can eat. For, yeah, and it's, it has offline caching. So basically, yeah. you can put... It doesn't have everything. There's a lot of stuff missing. But um, you can basically download... What did I download? Um, just, geez, I got a Kinks box set. Like this, like five CD Kinks box set just shows up on there. Like a ten Dylan records just show up on there. Um, Isn't that awesome? I love it. it. It's really, it's really awesome. Now, 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 two things. First of all, it's made me rethink how much of my actual iTunes, because you know, amongst my friends, my hipper friends, more and more of my friends don't even carry stuff around on. They don't, they don't download stuff, quote unquote, like they used to. They stream. Um, so I, I've, and then B. You have to make a decision about that because otherwise you're going to fill up your phone really, really, really fast. In my case, I actually hit the edge. I hit like I filled my phone for the first time. Do you have a 32 but, gig? Uh, I don't know. You might have say it. Yes, no. Anyway, I like it. It's a nice phone. But uh, <laughs> My but problem with RDO was uh, I had a subscription for about two months and I really liked the service and I never, I didn't really run into too many issues where I was running out of music that I wanted to listen to. But the most frustrating aspect I had with it was to use their Air desktop player, you always had to log into the website and start playing the music from there. And usually whenever I'm launching iTunes or some sort of music right. service, I want to click a button, I want to go to a random play, like, hit play, and just have it play any music in my library. And it was, like, it it was, was like a lot more effort like for that in RDO yeah. than it was in iTunes. I, I, t- I totally agree with you, um, uh, Justin. It's, it feels really uh, pretty janky on the desktop. It's not. It's a pretty app, and the fact that it trawls through your iTunes library and looks for what you might have is cool. I wish it gave me the option of saying, "Don't give me stuff that's just you know clip only." But this, the, th- the second thing I was going to say uh, is that this is the first app in a pretty long time that's legal that um, made me go, "Wow, this." industry or these industries are actually fighting on a lot more fronts than I realized and I bet more fronts than a lot of them realize because if you think about it, it's not as simple as I don't want to pay for music because I do pay for music it's a question it's a question of immediacy it's a question of variety it's a question of mungibility there's so you know what I mean it's not really as it's it's so easy to try and fight this one war of going oh you guys are thieves and we're awesome but there's actually this that app is disruptive it's, it was the beginning of disruption in a really serious way if it's legal. I just, I, I, I don't know. I, it I is legal. And, uh, and what's interesting is it's basically a subscription service, the subscription service that Apple refuses to do. I discovered a lot more music with my two months on RDO than I ever have mm-hmm. on Ping. It's great for discovery. It, yeah. it was great because I discovered all these new artists that I would have never heard of just because other people that were using the service were recommending them or my friends were recommending them. And if you go to the iTunes top charts, it's usually you're going to see Lady Gaga and uh, Keisha you see, and you also see my, when my they... arch nemesis Justin Bieber and, you know. <laughs> I, I see a lot just because my friends, um, new albums get uploaded. And so in my little, it's actually, it's, it's a not useless social network, which is rare. And it's actually functional. <laughs> and, and so when, as, it, if you, as you get new records, it, it uploads that. And you see it in this annoying Facebook-like stream. But I, cause, oh, I see Brianna got this new album. I'm going to go check that out. You've got a local chart just for your friends. It's my contention that what makes social networks suck is that they never make sense until it's about your friends and what you care about. And that's why... I, no matter how great Facebook ever gets, I'll always not care that much about it. But I, I don't love everything on Twitter, but I love my friends on Twitter. RDO? RDO? RDO is great at that because it's totally contextual. It's about, do, f- help me find the people who love the same music as me. I'm talking too much, sorry. What about Ping? The new Ping on uh, iTunes canceled, updated? Canceled it. Canceled it. Canceled Ping. Now they have now, you see now they have this sidebar. You could click on a... Uh uh, a song in your library, and it, uh, nothing will happen. Well, it's supposed to, something. It's nothing happened. I guess. I guess this cheap. You have to be playing it. This cheap trick song. You have to be playing it. 
Yeah. Let me play some cheap trick and see if anything happens here. Nothing here. Hmm. Uh, maybe it's because it's cheap trick. How about Charlie Daniels Band? The Devil Went Down. This is now you're seeing a little bit about me that you perhaps didn't know. Oh, look, there's awesome a little. Song. I could say I like it. I can post. I could show artist profile. So there's now some new stuff in well, Ping a little bit. I mean, that, that's the, the Ping is the thing. I mean, the reason that I like Ping is that I think of songs that I want to talk about. You know, that I, that, that have some his, historical interest to me, uh, and I um, uh, I go to the song. I just search the song, find Can the song, and I just explain to me why when I it says I just purchased the song "We on Fire" by Chamillionaire. By the way, love. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the oeuvre of Chamillionaire. No, but it's awesome. Oh, yeah. Go, go, nigga. Zach boy taking over this nigga. Coke so, uh, <laughs> but what's weird about it, hey, it's not me, it's them. What's weird about it is I, it says I purchased this song and now I can buy it again, which I think is kind of cool. So uh, I guess one 99 cent purchase wasn't enough for Apple. They well, as the resident expert of the uh, mainstream music market, as I um, am inundated by Justin Bieber fans all day long. Why is that? They, well, if you. Uh, <laughs> did, did you do something I, to encourage that? Nice of you to ask, Leo. Well, if you go to <laughs> twitter.com slash Justin, oh, which is my Twitter. Oh, you and are you a, Justin. And if you do a search on my at, you, at replies, you will see hundreds upon hundreds of oh. tweets a day from little tween girls who just love Justin Bieber. And they always are going on and on oh, about how many times they've purchased his latest song on iTunes. And they wish... They oh, Justin, him. Justin, Justin. Oh, Can dude. I just say you're missing a really, really big opportunity here. You just say your actual your actual picture and your actual name. Can I just say, uh, if you just, oh, oh. I would. What do you there think I'm be, doing for Halloween? There should be a little devil on your left shoulder, and then another devil on your right shoulder, and then a dugout with other devils waiting to get into the game. Oh, oh man. Just well, go so with, I've, like, been you know, I've been dealing with this for about two years, and everyone's always like, well, why don't you just change your name? Why don't you just change your name? You well, just, like, I'm, waiting for a, just, I'm waiting for him to get his driver's license and back up a dump truck of money to my house. Oh, my God. Anytime anybody talks to you, it's Justin Bieber. We would also accept it. I'm waiting for him to get a car and then crashing into something while drinking something he should not have been drinking at that age. Uh, just, just a word to Florsk. Justin is not Justin Bieber. He's not going to follow you. Uh, Jessica? You should, you should just have a bot that just auto re auto responds. Always just says you're dead to me. Je <laughs> Mel <laughs> Melissa, you know the reason why. Love Justin Bieber. Melissa's handle is Bieber's Love Cash. I don't. That's oh, a, oh, there's some great ones. Every now and then they'll just send one straight to me, and I'll I'll actually reply to them and have some fun. It's oh, it's how I get my jollies every now and then. My <laughs> goodness. There's so many Bieber related things. I don't know who this person is. I don't know. I mean, I know he's like a famous kid with a weird haircut. But if you go to the Twitter homepage when you're not logged in and see that little flow of awful toots that are on the homepage, like half of them are, are like not only about Justin Bieber, but they're like by like. I don't know, Bieber bought 5,000 or whatever. Like, right. there's all these Bieber-related It's properties. all spam. Here's, yeah, a, all about, here's yeah. a Kim, whose handle is Pure Bieber. She says, Justin looks nothing like Justin Bieber. Makes me laugh how people say Justin, and then they go on like, I'm ha, 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 ha. Sorry. Mm -hmm. My favorite one in the past couple weeks is the one that replied to me and says, ha, ha, you're a big nerd. <laughs> Which is true, actually. <laughs> so maybe yeah, they I think I was, maybe yeah, I was, was like, well, you. you're right. <laughs> At least I got a professional haircut. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I've been Bieber. We've, we've, we have been hijacked by the Bieber. Now let's do a commercial, then we'll come back and do more Bieber. No, no more Bieber. We're done with Hold Bieber. Up. We're going to talk. about a Bieber hole. <laughs> Used to be rat holes. Now it's Bieber holes. Now it's time to talk about Drobo. Put all of your stuff on a Drobo. Yes, Drobo. The Amazing hard drive uh, that is many hard drives combined into one for redundancy and speed. And there is a Drobo just right for you if you go to drobo.com slash MacBreak. You'll see the original, the Drobo S, the Drobo Pro, the new Elite. I have a Drobo FS at home. I love it. I use it to back up all, you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, I back up everything uh, in my whole home network on my Drobo FS. Take a look at the uh, well. The Drobo had four disk space, right? So uh, redundancy, but then they went the then they went to the Drobo S that had five disk space for better performance and of course more storage. The Drobo Pro with eight disk space for small businesses, creative teams. Now they've got the Drobo Elite eight disk space, but it's a SAN. It's a storage area network. It it supports up to sixteen connections via two gigabit Ethernet ports for connecting to hosts using iSCSI. 
which is very slick. VMware certified, so you can use it for virtualization. In fact, it's, it's supported, supports all the all the different virtualization technologies. Drobo is just fantastic, and we've got some really great deals. You'll save up to five hundred dollars on a populated Drobo when you go to Drobo.com/slash/MacBreak. I think they have a new one today. A new Drobo? A new Drobo. Really? Yeah, I think that there's a new a new Drobo today. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Oh my God, I'm having a I'm having a jingle meltdown. Sorry about that. <laughs> I pushed too many buttons here. I, okay, let's see. Drobo. If I go to Drobo.com, will I see the new one? I'm trying I to. I blame Blue Bottle. bottle. <laughs> it's all Blue Bottle. Too much Blue Bottle. I'm it's, just um, looking at Drobo.com. Yeah, I don't I don't see it here, but there's a. Uh, I know that there's a new one. Hmm. I know these things. The Drobo Pro FS. So it's the same as the FS that you have, but it's yeah. Pro. Oh yeah, VMware Those certified. Yeah, 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 yeah. They got even more. Even they more got stuff. more drives, and it's FS. And one of the things that they're oh, doing now no. is allowing you to seamlessly like sync between the two Drobos. So, like, if you have a Drobo at the office and a Drobo at the house, you yes. can have them. Like all that software is built in, so you don't have to think about it anymore. Right. It's all done. We've been waiting for that because we were going to do offsite at my house. Yep, <laughs> and then vice so, versa. So that's pretty cool. So, D R O B O, Drobo dot com. Slash Mac break, and you'll get uh, up to $500 off a populated Drobo. I think I have a, a song to play. D R O B O, D R O B O, Drobo. Feeling droopy. No other podcast has so many jingles as Mac break. <laughs> Quickly. Moving uh, right along down the rundown, China gets the iPhone, and apparently loves it. They didn't like the 3GS. Did not sell well, but uh, pre-orders through China Unicom, which is the mainland China uh, uh, phone company, 200,000 sold, another 40,000 sold out in stores. You cannot get an iPhone to save your life. 1,000 people lined up in Beijing at the Apple store on Friday to get the iPhone 4. What happened? Didn't they add Wi-Fi into this version? Yeah, but does that really, was that... That the dis the distinguishing factor? I they got caught up. They got caught up in it. They just they were they just saw the the wave and they, I don't know. I don't know Weird knows. though, if you do get the iPhone four in China, you will not be able to download your own maps. You will. <laughs> it's hardwired, hardwired with uh, with censored Google Maps. The censored data set for China. You can't get your own maps in there. <laughs> Yeah, because uh, the town of Free Tibet, Arkansas, that's, that's a no, that's yeah. an start. That was going to cause problems. Mm. It's, a, it's an yeah. odd, odd thing. Yeah, but that, that, I was, I was, I was reading about that, and that's that's interesting. Where uh, it will basically they 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 want to use a special Chinese map set that has non-controversial border declarations. Oh, that says I get that, it. That's that's that certain regions actually belong to China right. and not that's part of another is. nation. Got it. And it's oh, good. so Taiwan sense. is just that is is China South. Yeah, right. You know, <laughs> you know it's it's one of those things, and, right. and Tibet is just China. China. You know, there's, China a border, is there's a border. There's a somewhere land. that's making everybody somebody mad right now. Like there's somebody that's understandably because when you move over this way, you're going to push the other guy that way. Right. I don't think there's such a thing as a non-controversial. Well, All unless you, you run the maps, unless you run the country. Crying out loud, the, the border to my uh, plot of land and my neighbor's plot of land was controversial. I keep moving the stakes and he keeps moving them back. I don't. So I think yeah. the, one thing that I think is really interesting uh, it, when you look at this is you, you hear all this news always about the, in any of these countries uh, that, you know, the average person only makes this much money and, and this will never succeed. And the thing is, is in every single country, you have a group of people who um, have crazy money that will spend it on crazy things. Somebody said that on Twitter. We talked about it on Twitter. And, uh, you know, it's expensive. Even even subsidized, it's still like $800 in Chinese money. Wow. It's a lot for us. and It's really a lot for uh, China. But, the, but, there's, but uh, I think it was Ryan Block from uh, Gadget, GDG2. Uh, don't you think, said, though, there's uh, oligarchs so everywhere. Don't you think it's but they like, had the like uh, jailbreak, food, jailbroken phone forever before they even had the official right. phone. They would be importing them into China. and Because my wife, she lived in China for about six months last year, and she said everywhere she went, everywhere. Yeah. people had brought in iPhones. And we saw that, was, Andy, when we were there last summer. Yep, uh, and I bought myself a really good knockoff, too, for, for 50 bucks. So uh, it's a, their, their, their entrepreneurship is very, very big uh, for a communist nation. Well, same, and the same in Africa. In Africa, when I'm there, uh, a lot of people that I'm dealing with all have iPhones. You know, and they don't sell them there. I mean, they sell them in South Africa, but all these other countries, they're just buying them and jailbreaking them. Yeah.
Yeah. My, my theory on this would be, uh, this is just a wild guess, but um, I, I felt like this when I was in England, and it's, like, it's not like people eat healthy in England. They're like, oh, our portions must seem very small to you, and then they <laughs> hand you fish and chips in this right. big thing the size of an infant. <laughs> but I think it's a question of splurging, and, and the thing is, I think everybody splurges on something. Right. It's just that some people splurge on really costly stuff, and then Americans splurge on costly stuff a lot. I think that's probably one difference. I'm going to guess. You know, everybody has like a, a mad money thing that they do every once in a while. Do you know what I mean, though? It isn't like they're going to buy every one of those. Maybe they take care of it a little better, keep it a little longer. Do you know what I mean? It's, I agree. It's just the, I agree. It could be just, just that's their priority. Well, maybe it's the, maybe, I mean, I don't know enough about the culture or the economy to say, but, I, I, you know, people could afford that. They're just not going to buy that like every month. We went on you know a, I, mean? I don't know if, Andy, if you went on this excursion, but during our... Uh no, I guess you did. You weren't on the land tour we did with Don McAllister was with me, but we went to a very small town in Guaylin province that was agricultural. It was kumquat uh, harvest. You know, they, they've kumquat farmers and went into a house, very modest house. The woman uh, to supplement her income uh, made some sort of alcoholic uh, liquor that was in, native to the area that had uh, snakes in it. Mm. And the corners <laughs> of the I'm not kidding. The corners of the house filled with jars with 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 fermenting snakes uh, and a ginormous Samsung flat screen TV on the wall. <laughs> so, uh, and they all, every house I saw had satellite dishes. So you're right, it's priorities. We had a, we had a, we were getting ready for a party a few months ago and paid to have a lady come help clean our house and she pulled up in a Benz. <laughs> <laughs> you really we don't a, want your house clean. We have a driving. 1996 Jetta. I just want to be really clear about this. <laughs> your maid drives a better car than you. How do Not you feel about beige. that? She's a, she's a she's a prosperous Russian lady who just you know probably because can... she cleans her own house. Yeah, that's it. There's the difference right there, Andy, isn't it? She well, saves her money. It's not like we have her in all the time. You know? <laughs> so, so, okay, no sorry. need to apologize. No, we you have oligarch. You know, we, we have, we have some, uh, yeah. No, no, we have some undocumented people for that. They're uh, we keep them in a kennel, and uh, oh, you know, they get, oh, they get privileges if they uh, earn it. That's oh, jeez. Oh gosh. Oh yeah, you're gonna come down on me. Can I know. You? I'm the one who played the song. Leo, know. when you have your own shoe line, you can complain <laughs> about working conditions, okay? But when Merlin is trying to do get that kind of red carpet style at a mm -hmm. TJ Maxx price, God bless the work Merlin Man is doing. <laughs> Google Voice app officially approved. <laughs> Sorry, get down. Sit down. Sit down, oh, Merlin. I was pointing at my Johnson in a rap like wish. <laughs> <laughs> Sit down. <laughs> Are we done with that? I had a question, but we're done with no, that. No, we're right? not done. Go ahead. I'm uh, just no, going to hang I my just, head in uh, shame. I'll be back. I'm, I'm always really, it sounds like a, you look nice today bit, but it's not. I'm actually, I actually am really interested about cultural differences and things that aren't clear to us because we're so, because mm. we are the dominant culture in the world. Mm. I mean, mm -hmm. yay, yay us. But I'm just curious. I mean, when you look at things like how iPhone sales go or will somebody adopt the iPad, I mean, how do you, I, I just, for example, like our, when, our, when the dot com that I worked at decided to quote unquote internationalize, they thought it would be as simple as just opening an office in Italy. And of course, <laughs> it's incredibly complicated to do business, <laughs> even in the UK compared to the US. So I'm just wondering, like, what kind of factors, what, I mean, is this too general a question? Like, how do you go into a market like China and how do you decide that what has to change? What has to be different? How do you sell it? What are the factors that people look at to decide if some, when to roll this out and to whom? Is it, that's probably a really big question. I've got, I, just uh, I got Thomas Friedman on the line here, and he says, your understanding of my movement... I got into movement. a cab with a burrito. <laughs> my, I was Chinese, and so now that's a book. <laughs> okay, I don't know. Does anybody want to tackle... Well, I, I think there's a priority of markets. I mean, I think you look at where... You, Alex, you know, you, you, you do a lot of stuff uh, internationally. Yeah, I mean, you have to look at there. I mean, we're you know we're constantly looking at where we're going to do business and, and and how we're going to do it. And a lot of that is how easy is it to work with the government? What are the requirements? How big is the market? Uh, what is the education level? What is the English level? What is the? I mean, for us, you know, we're we're doing production, and you really can't do production in it's other more languages. Like, is it a good fit? It's more. Like, and it's not so much yeah. like can we bend them to our will, but are we a good fit for each other? Right. Yeah, you really look at it that because they're too big to to really get into. Can you bend it? You know, <laughs> with the government. China's, you know, China's, you just, that's a costly mistake if you get it wrong, right? I mean, if you roll. Ask with the Google, wrong. baby. Yeah. I mean, there's a yeah. lot of investment to it, but China's obviously a really, really, really big market. I mean, they have, uh, I think, more kids in school than we have people in the United States, you know? So the... Um, uh, so the, the thing is, is that there, you know, it's, it's obviously a huge opportunity, but there's all, there's a, there's a lot of stuff you, you have to deal with language barriers, uh, the government, uh, restrictions that are, that are there, uh, you know, all of the, you know, cultural differences, but, 
but there is a big market that has proven itself willing to buy all kinds of stuff. I mean, there's a thriving luxury market in China. So uh, it's not, I don't think it's, I don't think it's surprising. Uh, I think that Apple just, it probably took them a long time to kind of get to where they're finally, you know, really launching this full tilt, but they're opening stores, they're doing all the other stuff and, and it, it totally makes sense. Okay, I'm going to move on now if it's okay with you. Yeah. Apple Insider says the Google Voice app reportedly approved by Apple. The official one. We're not talking about GV. Last week we talked about a GV Plus Premium. Uh, this is actually TechCrunch. Uh, AOL's TechCrunch. Is that, <laughs> could that possibly, that story no, it's, of it's yesterday. It's a done deal. It's, it's done? a done deal. It's, it happened. Yeah. It went yep. through. <laughs> wow. Twenty-five or forty million dollars, depending on who you ask. Wow! I was uh, I was sitting next to Pete Cashmore uh, at the movies last night, and I asked him about it. He said, "I hope it's true." <laughs> <laughs> did he give you? Did Pete he give you some interesting facts about the movie? <laughs> no, it's interesting. Um, by the way, I, I I know everybody's raving. David Denby in the New Yorker said the social network is brilliant and uh, something innovative. I think it's the same words they used to talk about Apple. But I was not. I was not. I was underwhelmed a little bit by the movie. I did not think it was that good, and I also didn't think it was that uh, nasty to Mark Zuckerberg. I thought it was very. Have you seen it yet, Annie? I have not seen it yet. But it's, it's uh, worth the, seeing. The, the, fact, the fact that it's an Aaron Sorkin movie pretty I much means it. I have to see it. I love it, if but not, I think if, if only for the eight-minute single-shot scene, which everybody's just talking <laughs> with cameras <laughs> picking up and losing conversations yeah. over the course of ten minutes. That's yeah. how the show begins. I mean, the movie begins is a uh, <laughs> of course, yeah, very difficult to follow conversation in a bar. Um, very snappy dialogue, but I think almost too choppy because the movie keeps cutting back and forth between depositions and the actual events, deposition, the actual event, deposit, and it was I, I didn't like that very much. But more, and it may be that I'm too close, and we know too, I know too much about the story, and I, you know, I, maybe that it's general audiences will love it, and I, I just know too much. But um, what what I was surprised is because everybody's saying, oh, poor Mark Zuckerberg, he's just gonna, this is just a smear piece and i don't think he came off that badly in it he just comes off as a kind of anti-social nerd the kind of person we all know very well uh, of which there are many yes yeah there was an all there's all things considered story about this the other day that i i i, I, went, I wish i had rewind on my radio because i'm pretty sure they said that mark zuckerberg is a private person <laughs> and I think that he said that on Oprah. Oprah, what, he, when he was talking to Oprah, there's like he did say he's that. like, and I know you're a very private person, Mark, and I'm just like, Whoa. well, we should respect that, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to go see it this Friday because, as the nerd I am, it is my duty it. to go. I, it is my duty to see any movie that has lots of beautiful people typing in front of computers and saying <laughs> words I might understand. That's the chief problem. <laughs> you know, the, 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 I don't think this is a spoiler to say the most the, uh, one of the most dramatic moments in the movie is when they make Facebook live. Right. And, you, and, and, and by the way, if this weren't about Facebook, if this were about, you know, site zzz.com i think it would be a snore i think it's only because of all you the can't you can't make typing look interesting they've tried it every can't. way so oh, he green flips, letters on keanu reeves's he, face he Ooh. flips the switch <laughs> you know it's gonna it's good and, and because you know it's facebook it's like oh he's face this is that we're here at the moment facebook began <laughs> and it's just kind of okay Done. So that they need to have a murder plot to it, so it's like antitrust with uh, yeah. what Tim Robbins exactly. when he was the evil Bill Gates dictator. That was good. Now that was a good movie. Yeah. yeah, that that's infinitely watchable, my friends. Infinitely. So, what do you think? Google Voice approved by Apple. This is what AOL's TechCrunch says. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can't even say that with a straight face. Is well, if it got approved, it's gonna. I'm gonna have to come up with another joke to keep recycling on Twitter because I can no longer ask if Apple is still reviewing and studying the Google Voice app. So mm. I'm happy to see it as a developer because that was always one of the things that I got frustrated with when I was <laughs> you know, kind of pondering if I wanted to be in the App Store. Was uh, well, are they going to reject my app because I'm the next Google Voice or what? Well, it and proves it seems that, like they've lessened those restrictions a it, lot lately. It proves that Apple wasn't lying when it said, "Well, we haven't rejected it." We're reviewing it. Right. A year later. <laughs> we're we're just extra approving it. That's how much we like it. <laughs> that was a well, yeah, it, the, it's the, not the lost, Apple Insider story that I read it. said that they were uh, that they approved the release, but now Google is going back and they're adding multitasking support and iOS oh, four support. Interesting. So did they have the actual version from a year and a half ago still sitting what they and waiting for review for the past 18 months? And now it's like, oh, well, it was approved. So let's go back and add all this new stuff now to catch up with everybody. Very interesting.
the manila folder fell behind the desk. We're sorry. <laughs> oh, we found that. Oh, That's yeah. Awkward. I'm trying to remember. I had it uh, back in the day, and I have tried several of its successors, which have just been wow. The Google, uh, you never had the official Google. That was never approved. Oh, uh, okay. Well, I, I thought you I, had, I, the, I had, there was GV+. Plus. Had, that might have been the one. I think it's the how, one you how had. Tightly, how there's tightly, GV+, how plus and there's GV is, Connect. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, for me, the thing is, is that be, if it's if it's really able to run in the background like Skype does, for instance, without hopefully awesome. without draining my battery the same way Skype does, and it's it's able to attach to my to my uh, you know uh, attach to my Google Voice number, uh, to me that is just Huge. that's what I've been waiting for because it's just been one of those things that I I don't want to give people out a, a phone my right. cell number I just want to give my Google Voice can, number so that I can route it wherever I want to go. That's I would say one of the chief selling points of Android phones is that it does have that tight integration in Google Voice. Right. Well, yeah. it's it's done. It's done. It, I mean, the, the problem with phones is echoed throughout a, the problem of a lot of our uh, communication tools, which is that you, you, there's always a trade-off between the immediacy of getting somebody the second it occurs to you that you want them versus the relative. Who knows? They could be in the middle of something right now. It could be inconvenient. And phones, even with answering machines, answering machines just make it worse. They just incur debt for you. And I think <laughs> the the the, the big, biggest thing Google did. And I guess you know I had something called Sunrocket back in the day that did this. Oh yeah, um, yeah. What happened to that? That was a really nice service. No, they they went under and got acquired and then new people made it you know suck. i'm really disappointed x marks is going out of business i know that sucks, that's so that sad. Totally sucks. mitch capor's but, company that synchronized firefox bookmarks but what they but what, what they did was they they took out took that out of the equation if you want to answer it if you want to answer your google phone like a phone you can do that if you want to have your google phone throw up a little bit of a speed bump that somebody's got to say who they are you can do that um or if you just want to hit do not disturb and have everything be shunted off into this you know pile that you collect when you're ready I, or for that matter, I think, I mean, you can just filter based on groups. It's, there's just so much to it that's not simply fiddling. It really is about saying, I want to manage how available I am. And for me, that means a lot. And for the people that I talk to, that means a lot. So I think it's much more than just like, oh, this is a cool VoIP thing. Oh, I agree. I, I, think, I think it's, you know, <laughs> I, you know, I just can't imagine having a regular phone. My, my sister-in-law has a phone. And every time we're there, she's <laughs> like, I don't understand why you only have this, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, Bring. no, I don't want to buy any siding. You know, it's like constant spam the entire time. That's all she gets. It is amazing, but, isn't it? I get so. Did, I, get, rub, did I, I make you rub your face, Leo? Did I make you rub oh, your you face? you just, yeah, because I get Viagra people calling me. Calling me on my phone. They call oh, me at the see, office. No, that's, that's that. That's really that's low. Now, how do, there's there's really two ways to handle handle phones uh, calls. As far as I'm concerned, there's there's the, what I what I tend to do if I'm working. If I call as soon as I know that they're a thing, I don't even say I have to go. I just put the phone down. I feel like they didn't show me any uh, respect to call me, so I don't have to show them any respect to say I have to go now. I just just put the phone mm. and go back to work. Um, that's what I should one. do. You're right. That's well, no, what? because because then they'll think they you just accidentally got cut off. They'll cut you back. But I, I I'll 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 give them one polite no not uh, I'll give you one polite. I'm sorry, I don't conduct any such business like this over the phone, but thank you for calling anyway. And if they say thank you for, for your time, I say you're welcome. Goodbye. Now, if they're American... If, they, say, if, if they're, they go to any, any other page, it gets right. Out. If they're American, you can say put me on your do not call list, and, and, and they're legally bound to not ever call you again or they can be prosecuted not that that works but a lot of but these the viagra people are from china and india the, the, and the, so the, they uh, and in fact i said to this guy he called the office he said oh we'd like to talk to leo laporte about his uh, about cialis about his cialis per they said about his cialis purchase so i what? got on the phone with him i know <laughs> i got on the phone with him i said Dudes, this is my work. You are embarrassing me. <laughs> it didn't help. That is weak. <laughs> it didn't help. You know, one, one thing that Google is currently not uniquely situated to do, but is better situated to do, is to be a conduit for making uh, stuff that didn't used to be functional, functional, which again means a lot to me. So for example, I tend to say, you know, you ever have the thing where you just want to schedule a phone call with somebody and you have to exchange like 35 emails about it or, or you end up using something like Doodle, you know, doodle.ch. Uh, my thing is I just say to my friends, like, just send me, uh, send me a modifiable GCAL invite. That's, you don't, and send it to me. I understand what it is. I, I can either do it or I can't. I can respond if I need to, yeah. but you know, why don't we start by making something functional before yeah. we start going like, you know, oh, this occurred to me, so I'm just gonna like go take your time. Yeah. I think Google is in a position to do that because you know, who's to say that you couldn't do stuff like read, uh, filter against a subject line and have that turn into a certain kind of thing. I don't know. I mean, I think I'd love to see more of that. I wish there was more Google Voiceification of the world. That's what I wish. <laughs> well, it's interesting because the uh, at the time the thinking was that it was AT and T, not Apple, that kept Google Voice off the phone. And you can see why, because it really does disintermediate AT and T. 
Um, however, um, either AT and T gave up, or Apple. Our theory uh, the last few weeks is that well, Apple is just uh, starting to become sensitized by the DOJ, the EU, all these investigations, the FTC, and they're saying, well, we better start, you know, approving some of this stuff. In fact, this might have worked. The European Commission has dropped not one but two antitrust investigations into Apple. Uh, the one was on the restriction on what tools you could use to develop for iOS. Remember a few weeks ago, Apple changed their tune on that one. The other is, and not related, but forcing iPhone users in Europe to return to the country of purchase to get warranty repairs. You bought it in Poland, you go to Poland. Uh, Apple changed both policies and the EU, EU has dropped investigations. Um, so that's kind of interesting. How are you deciding what battles you want to fight? You know, just these, these aren't worth it. For Apple, I mean, it's just you know, there's a, there's plenty of other things to do, and I think finally they 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 got some sense of you know. Well, you know, for people who say there's no government has no role, there's no point in government. This just shows you maybe some maybe a little regulation ain't a bad thing, after all. <laughs> well, these were the most positive inroads Apple's made since they launched the App Store. I mean, people were complaining about the tool set and uh, apps being rejected and all this stuff for the past. The App Store has been out what two years now, and a lot of this stuff has been an issue since day one, since it launched. And it's it's refreshing to me to see all this stuff finally starting to change because I'm a lot more comfortable now than I was six months ago with putting a big chunk of my business on the App Store. Whereas you, six li months you ago, like to see this uh, this softening. Oh, apps. Absolutely. I mean, I'm never going to go and use Mono, which is the .NET tool set to build iPhone apps. I'm never going to use Flash to build iPhone apps. I'm always going to use Xcode because that's what I know and I'm comfortable with. But if a better tool comes along down the road that's not made by Apple, I'm comforted to know that I am going to have the option to use it if I want to. Well, and it's just insulting to say what you can and can't use. Oh, absolutely. I think... Most people are going to are frustrated when they see that people are going to be there's like they'll say oh well someone's going to be using flash and the app's going to be substandard and subpar well if it's a subpar app then no one's going to download it it's going to get poor reviews and the developer's going to learn their lesson if you want to build a really yeah. high quality application on the app store I think at this point you still do have to use Xcode and Objective C but, but Apple has never taken the path oh we'll let the market decide on that one oh we'll allow some bad apps that the market will reject that's not Apple's way they're oh, saying and, we want it only to be good apps in the store so right. if, if, if you buy into the Apple way you have to allow them to do things like say you can't use flash if it's substandard right. Well, I think yeah, the thing is, is as, a, as a user, I just want to be informed. I want to know that I'm buying, uh, that I'm paying for something because there's no way to get really re get returns. So the issue that I have as someone who kind of willy nilly buys lots of apps as I need them is I get really frustrated when it turns out to be complete crap and there's nothing I can do about it. And I'm, it's okay because it was two ninety nine or three ninety nine, but but uh, it, you know if if that happened often and that started causing sluggish, sluggishness on my phone, I might start buying a lot less apps system wide. And so all I want to know is that is it is it a native app or it's not a native app? I just want to I want to brand on there that just lets me know so that I can make that as part of my decision. What I don't want is them all mixed in with everything else. That's that's my issue. Well, I think where you're going to see a lot of these, let's, let's just use Flash as the example, where I think you're going to see a lot of these Flash applications is from big corporations. So you're going to get, let's say Condé Nast, for example. Condé Nast is going to say, we want to bring Magazine X to the iPad. What's the best way we can do this? Well, InDesign has this great InDesign to Flash tool. Oh, we know what InDesign is. We know what Flash is. Let's mm -hmm. build an app that way. And so as soon as you launch this application, most likely you're going to be able to tell that it is a Flash application. And most of the time, these big companies are giving these apps away for free. So you're not really out money on that. I don't really think small developers like myself or the Panics or the Rogue Amoebas of the world, I don't think they're ever going to be using tools like this. I think it's for the big corporations who want to build something on one platform and then push it out everywhere. Jason, oh, yeah, Snell had a, Jason Snell had a toot about this the other day. Uh, what was the app that just came out that only works in, uh, in uh, landscape mode? Was uh, Sports it Illustrated. The, is that right? And uh, yes, well, but he, but he made, I thought he made an interesting point, which is apparently it's extremely costly to publish what amounts to, I guess, four versions of the site. Yeah. I'll right, say, I, I, I can say something about that because uh, I've been off and on developing a game and when I'm working with a developer, we're trying to figure out, okay, so how do we need the interface to change if it goes this way instead of that way? Do we have the text move? Do we have the characters move? And then after going back and forth about different modes, we said, or we could just simply lock it to portrait mode. And then we went, yeah, 
let's do that <laughs> because we just don't have the time to not I mean you get one interface that really works great and you start thinking in those terms and then you wonder what added value can we add by letting this rotate and you're thinking we're not adding any value we're just letting it rotate so I don't have a problem with that. Yeah, I think that the issue is, is that if you really want to have any kind of control over how it looks, I think you're going to have to decide one way or the other because, yeah, it would be way too much work to try to do both uh, as far as layout. I, I read this article on, on how Wired had to do their first uh, iPad app and, you know, it, because they were doing it through the Adobe pipeline and there was just this incredible mess of all these images that there were two sets of the, of the magazine you're actually downloading. That's why it's so big and everything's converted to some kind of, you know, it, it's just like a, it's a big mess because they're trying to deal with this rotation. If you try to have it do it dynamically, you'll get what you get with dynamic, which is the, the text won't flow right, the images won't be in the right place. There, you know, there'll be a lot of things that just aren't, that don't have the fit and finish that magazines are kind of used to. I think that's, that's Let part of the problem. Let me ask Justin something, because it's something I've wondered, um, and you're an iOS developer, so you're a good person to add. Are any of your apps available for iPad or are they just iPhone apps? Uh, right now, Elements is out of the gate. It was universal. That's right, that was so an iPad app. Right, and Markdown yeah. Mail 2, which has been in review for about a week now, it is a universal app that will run on both platforms. So I'm I, a big fan of doing mm -hmm. both apps as a universal app, but I understand there's a lot of issues where... My it, question, it, exactly, yeah. It's it's like building two apps at once. So I released okay. Elements 1.1 yesterday, and about half the development time was spent on doing the iPhone version, and then I get that looking great and working great, and then I have to move on to building and making sure the iPad work, version it. works. So that, that, is, is, that was exactly my question because it just feels – I thought it might not be so hard to make a universal app. And, uh, boy, it sure seems like e, either they don't offer an iPad app for ages and ages. Like, uh, it's, it's driving me crazy. I use the Sonos Player, and then I have to use the iPhone app on the iPad. And it would be such a beautiful iPad app, and I know they're working on it. Customers uh, love universal apps, yeah. but they don't really understand that it is a lot more okay. work to make a really great – app that works on both platforms. That's good but, to know. And, the, and then the other issue, of course, is they've you bought the iOS phone version, and then mm -hmm. they want to charge you twice as much for mm -hmm. an iPad right. version. Hey, Justin, did you see that post? Uh, I, forget, I don't know the dude's name, but the, the guy who, who recently had a post, uh, the guy who was on, um, worked at Microsoft and was on the Office team at the time Word 6 came out. I don't know if you guys have seen this. I'll try and find the link for you. But it was a fascinating post because I'm one of those people that is like, man, Word 5.1, I think, is one of, like, one of the greatest apps ever made. And Word 6, <laughs> wow. I mean, do you remember all you the know, Word Perfect. Word Perfect 5 was the best word processor That's what people ever. say. Word people Star anyway, is not the fancy is... pants enough for you. You should be focusing on the words. <laughs> Actually, you know, it's you know so what? funny I because I saw. I've been saying was that the since big the mistake. early 90s. That was the one when it all went downhill. Word 5.1, and I don't remember what the Word Perfect version was. I was so sad when they stopped making word perfect for the mac that was the best word processor ever on the macintosh i, I just remember it's in joel spolsky's uh best of writing software book which is a terrific book from a few years ago but anyway uh, i just recommend it especially justin you should check it out because this guy it just makes such an interesting point about you know what we tried to do with six was to make uh word more mac like and what we really <laughs> meant with mac like was we make it more like 5.1 according to our users and really the thing for everything i don't love about the guy. The thing Guy Kawasaki pulled off was he convinced a whole bunch of really skeptical per people that doing more than a port was worthwhile. And and in this instance, I think what you're doing is really smart to not bite off more mm -hmm. than you can chew. Mm -hmm. Because just throw together some app and just add a little bar on the left just to say, you know, it's you know, use something like whatever. Like I'm not a I'm not a big gamer, but that uh, the Angry Birds game, like it's really it's a different experience to use that. It is. And that doesn't happen by accident. Yeah. So uh, anyway, I'm ranting, but I, I, I think that's one thing that defines what makes a Mac a Mac. And I'll bet you Steve Jobs thinks that's what makes the iPhone a freaking iPhone. Is we're not just going to let you go dump like a, like a big pile of mashed potatoes in here and call it an iPhone app. It's, it needs to have the polish and fit and finish. And uh, I don't know. I, I think you're right, though. I think users don't appreciate why that makes the Mac special, personally. By the way, it was WordPerfect 3.5. That was the greatest version of, and it, and you can still download it for free from the Corel site, but it won't run on any Intel Macs. So. I used to love Right Now. I right Now was Word. awesome. Yep. Yeah. Right Now was in the pocket for me. I loved Word 3. It was the first word I used, I think. But but Right Now, man, Right I Now agree. was like super draw. It was just, mm -hmm. or, uh, or Canvas maybe. It was like mm -hmm. right in the pocket, mm -hmm. you know? Wasn't Steve, so Jobs, Merlin, Steve you Jobs involved in the production? Sorry, go ahead. Uh, two two things. Wasn't Steve Jobs yeah. involved in production of White right now? Did he need, like own the company or was, something? Yes, I think so. Was it Claris? Was yeah. it Claris? No, but it no, wasn't, wasn't Claris. But it was like right. one of those one of those companies that he happened it. to own. And, yeah. right. and huh. the second thing is, I gotta go. Okay, uh, Andy, oh. not go. So, do, you, do you want to do uh, a quick 
a quick audible mm -hmm. pick before you go or uh <laughs> sure uh, I and actually i think time. you know i think i can start this off and merlin can pick it up for me uh well, because uh, i wrote a i wrote a column uh last week about some experiments i've been doing on my own workflow or my work habits intended to try to make sure that i remove any distractions and just focus on the work that i'm doing uh, and a lot of it's being influenced by a lot of really great writing that's being done in the new york times and elsewhere uh, about how tech how the how technology can short circuit our thinking process that we have these brains that were designed as cavemen to use distractions in a useful way i.e to be able to make a stone axe and focus on that for an hour but still be aware of the <laughs> fact that oh there's a growling sound coming from the bushes i should stop what i'm doing right now and investigate that uh and part of the part of the dialogue is that uh, they're suggesting that if you have, for instance, uh, if you, uh, your, your iPhone set so that it always bings every time a new email comes in, Ugh. essentially your caveman brain sees that as, oh, Panther, let's take a look at that. Yep. Oh, Panther, yep. let's take a look at that. Uh, and so it's a really interesting, interesting field with a, a lot of great discussions going on. Um, if you want to, if you want to look up uh, on the Sun Times, that, pub that was published yesterday, uh, last week rather, uh, and I uh, liked a lot. Uh, in addition to the New York Times pieces uh, from a very good tech tech writer, they have not. <laughs> memorize the name of. Uh, I'm reading a book called The Shallows uh, by Nicholas Carr. The Shallows, What the Internet is Doing to Our Brains. It's a full-scale book. Nick is very interesting. He's very anti-internet. Exactly. Well, yeah. I, I'm not quite. Yeah, I'm not quite on his on his fence. But it talks about the neuroscience behind how the brain processes information, how it adapts to new things that we ask of it, and how we it even adapts when we ask it to do things that are stupid. Uh, so, for instance, he's talking about how uh, not just the not just the the sort of you know anti tech opinion that you know I, I I've lost my I've. Uh, uh, the, the, I, I can't all this all this all these technology things and the multi windows and they're distracting me and I, it's just trying to make me do too many things at once. But then he he produces the neuroscience that says here's the reason why the brain is just not good at doing multiple things at the same time. That if you're trying to do three things over the course of the same three hours, you need to set it up in forms of tasks that you start and finish, then move on to the next thing that you start and finish, then move on to the next thing. Uh, the greatest message I think that I've actually of course I'm reading this on a technical technology device i'm reading it on my ipad uh, and the kindle app tells me i'm 44 percent through it so i haven't finished the whole thing uh, but the really cool thing that runs through it both the uh encouraging thing and the cautionary thing is that the brain is extremely plastic from your you think that you uh, that your brain gets hardwired in when you're 14 or 15 and you can't really learn new things no the brain is always rewiring itself to do react to whatever we ask of it so when we basically train it to do things that are not in our best interest it gets better and better uh, at doing those bad things so if we're telling it no don't focus on this thing that you're supposed to write focus on anything that will take you out of this job especially if it's taking you out at a point where it's something that that's a, that becomes a tricky part of the job uh, and so that's why it becomes harder and harder to divert yourself from that behavior the good news is that the brain continues to be plastic throughout life so that if you sort of are aware of do, uh, that you're in habits that are bad you can easily sort of rewire your brain so that it's now uh, just like water that goes through sandstone and starts carving new channels to find the path of least resistance you can sort of rewire your brain so that it makes it easier uh, to do the things you ask of it so it's fascinating science fascinating productivity uh, I, I set up a, a this is not necessarily tied to the specific book but I experimented with uh, four or five new mission rules uh, for how I deal with my technology uh, and really after about a month I've I'm, uh, it's not like I'm a tense guy to begin with, but at the end of each day now, I feel as though I've gotten much more done with much little effort. Uh, I feel as though I'm really understanding the experiences that I'm having. And first and foremost, I no longer consider boredom to be an enemy. Uh, it is okay for me to be in line at the bank for two minutes and yeah. not check my email or not Just play a game. Because, again, that's another part of the neuroscience, that the brain needs some time with no agenda yeah. to simply process and integrate the experiences that you're having. So it's, it's, a, it's a really cool book. Uh, and it very well might change the way uh, that you work. And now I turn the, I give the microphone to Merlin, who will be brilliant for the next 20 minutes, and I'm going to download <laughs> just to hear what he has to say. But until then, i got to be in Boston. Thanks. See ya. Andy Naco, <laughs> Chicago easy, Sun Times. Take care, Andy. Great recommendation. You can get this book free at audible.com. Actually, Audible is just such a great resource for people who want to learn about things like mindfulness, uh, like getting things done it's just uh there's tons of stuff there and of course there's lots of fiction uh history biography i read all the time in fact audible saved my life because audible was was there when i had that two-hour commute and it and it, and it saved me from just <laughs> driving off the road in frustration uh, or road rage 
Um, and it also gives me a chance now to, to read. You know, I, I, we do have such busy lives these days. The ability to, to take some time and read, to fill the brain a little bit, is just wonderful. I, uh, audible.com slash MacBreak. Sign up for the, uh, the gold account. That's a book a month. You're going to want more in the long run, but try it. Try a book a month. First month's free. First book's free. You can cancel at any time, and the book's yours to keep forever. So maybe this would be the one for you. From Nicholas Carr, The Shallows, What the Internet is Doing to Our Brain. And uh, we thank Audible so much for their support of Mac Break Weekly. Did you want to add anything, Merlin? I mean, I know you are big into this. No, I know we're short on time. This. Um, you know me, I'll go on forever about this stuff, but I think he nailed it. I mean, there's there's so many angles to that. Uh, I don't have much of a specific opinion about the book apart from what I've heard. It, it's, it strikes me based on what I've read about what he says that he has the problem a lot of nonfiction authors have, which is he gets the first half right and the second half left right, which is, I mean, I don't think anybody's saying that, uh, you know, we should sit down and, you know, just fill our head full of junk all day, but I don't know. So some of it's a little bit reductive. My, my, my take on the whole landscape in a couple sentences is just that Something I say a lot, which is that you're going to be distracted by everything until you know what you really care about. I know that sounds really hippie, but I really believe that. And I think whether it's technology, I mean, like, do you need to set an alarm to remember to goof off? <laughs> Let's hope not. <laughs> oh, so then, okay, well, then you're not really forgetful. Yeah. You're just you're just not paying attention. Right. And and I think that the problem is the thrust of my stupid GD book is um, <laughs> that, uh, that. Which will be out any day now, right? Yeah, exactly. The, the basically, a lot of us are trying to solve the wrong problem on the wrong level for the wrong reasons. And until we're aware of what problem we're really trying to solve at what level for what reason, right. it's hard to be good, whether you're an engineer or an artist or whatever. And I, so I don't disagree with, what, with anything Andy said. I thought, actually, I'd love to interview him about that because I thought it was interesting. But anyway, I'll, I'll let you get back to it. But I, I think that's a really important point. People, people who are, really care a lot about something don't get distracted. Right. The, the people who get distracted um, are just not sure what to pay attention to. I like the idea, though. Just a little reminder, and I think it's appropriate to have a reminder that it's, sometimes it's, it's good not to have something going on to let the no, mind no, no, think. No, 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 no. Totally, 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 totally. My, my, the thing that I rail about and the thing that I get a lot of flack for is when people try to basically get a series of armatures and blinders to force them to care about something. Right. And, and that ain't you know, happen. The thing is, I, for example, I love Justin's app. Um, I love I love Jesse's new plain text app. I love these apps that are very as that does people like to say minimal and non-distracting. To me, the point when you turn a corner is when you say that you've got to have a non-distracting uh, environment in order to write. In which case, you know, you're not you're you not don't really love writing, writing. <laughs> right? <laughs> it's like you know. So uh, anyway, I, I think that's complicated. And anything you can do to remove the unnecessary craft, I think, is, is a great idea. Well, Justin, I'm sure you love programming do you right. need to do anything to get to get yourself to program no i do it because i like it that's yeah. why i have this job and yeah. I've, i get a lot of requests every not a lot but i get a, quite a few requests from people that want me to add some sort of distraction free functionality to end. elements it never ends it never ends there's always yeah. gonna be one more thing i just need this one more thing and then yeah. i can write and I, and i i designed the app for myself because i the the premise of the app was basically that i have a weekly column that I've been writing in the Evansville Courier and Press for the past three years. And I wanted to be able to write it on my iPad when I was out of town instead of having to bring my laptop with me. So I built the app to do that. And I have never needed a distraction-free environment. I just, I need a text editor and I needed it to, to sync back to my Dropbox account so that I could open my file back up and BB edit on my Mac and finish writing as I was going. And that's what I designed my app for. I, you mentioned Jesse's app that came out today, plain text. I'm really, it's, I kind of feel like I'm getting into the uh, the new era of Twitter apps on the iOS devices, as mm -hmm. in everyone's coming out with their own plain text Dropbox powered app. But I think that's a good thing because I think the three that I've seen thus far is each one of us has a different take on what we're doing. And I think that's good for consumers because my app has a specific direction I want to take mine. I think Jesse has a specific direction he wanna take his and the other guy, I can't remember what his name is, but he his app definitely has a different direction he wants to take his. And so of the three that are out there now, if I can take a third of those and a third of those people think my app is great, wonderful. And as you know, I have recommended this app. It is uh was a pick of the week on iPad today, and I just love it. This is Elements. It's a nice revision, too, Justin, the, the, the additions you made. What were, you, what uh, is, what's new in Elements? It came, the new version came out yesterday. I haven't a lot really... easier yeah. to name a document quick. Yeah, you nice. just type it right in the top there. I thought that was cool. 
Yep. Yeah, so uh, I pretty much took all the advice that I got from 1.0 and I added everything that everyone complained about. So I added in the ability to delete files. If I knew people were deleting as much as they are, I would have added that in 1.0. <laughs> um, I added the ability to rename files. I changed the user interface because I was a fan of the old Marble user interface style that it had before, but no one else on earth was. So I changed that. Mm. Um, I added, did some speed improvements. I can't remember everything else I added, but... I try, I got it to a point where I could get the email down a little bit, and now I'm focusing on adding some other stuff. I'm, the next release is going to be really focused on improving performance because I had a couple of people email me and say, "I'm trying to store 2,000 notes in your app, and it's not working so well." Well, I'm trying to make it work. I'm trying to make gonna, it now work a little bit this better. This for afternoon, that I'm about to become your next edge case. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Elements. So I'm to, it's yeah. a, it's on the iPhone and the you just saw the iPad app. And how much how much does it cost? It is uh, four ninety nine, and it's a universal app. Universal app, so buy it, and you got it. Thank you uh, for writing it, Justin, and uh, and we we talked about today a lot too. Let us get to our picks of the week. As long as we're talking uh, picks, I, Justin, I'll give you a moment while we uh, go to Alex Lindsay. We uh, didn't get Andy's pick, but uh, Alex, what's yours? I've got two. Okay, good. But you they're little, for it. little, they're bit, little, little bitty picks. They're not that expensive. I, I, I feel like I got to give everybody a break. So, first one is a is an iPhone app, and uh, this is called it's called Zen Brush. Now, uh, I I like playing with kanji, you know, practicing trying to um, do stuff like that with my finger uh, or a brush or something like that, and it just feels so much like a brush when you're when you're doing it on your iPad or your iPhone. In fact, if you if you hold your finger over it, it'll get thicker. Uh, if you go slower, it gets, you know, it really, whatever they did to figure out how to make your finger like a brush, um, they did it really, really well. And um, it's just fun to to do do little brush strokes on it. And uh, I don't know why, but it's it's fun. If you want to practice trying to do stuff like that, it's a, it's a great little, uh, uh, it's a great little application. I don't think it's very expensive. Um, and, $2.99 and, 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 for the And iPad here's the thing, is it really works. So if you look at this and go, oh, that's really cool, but I don't really think that's going to work, it does. That's all I have to say. Um, the second one is, uh, do, you, do, you, do you have a better file renamer? Is that what they call yeah, it? Yeah, awesome, awesome. Oh my awesome. gosh! I, so we, so we shot as as I, I was talking alluded to last week. We shot this thing with the Ask a Ninja, where we had all this stuff. We, it's all you know. We're doing this big contest where you can build a new open for Ask a Ninja, and we shot all these red files, and they're all in these you know red code, you know. And I had to convert that then to uncompressed, and I end up with these huge list of all this this code and stuff. And I haven't had to rename files for a long time. That's usually someone else in the company doing it. And I uh, and I was sitting there at home on Sunday, just going, Oh my gosh, I. I I got to figure out which one is the best one. So I started looking through and uh, man, this is such a great renaming tool. If you ever have to deal with, I just got to change a whole bunch of stuff. Um, is this the one from public space? Is that the one you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. And, awesome. and, and what's great is you can stack them. So I'd say truncate it and then add something to the front and then add mm -hmm. something to the, like it was like, you know, you can, you can do a whole bunch of different steps to the, to the, and you get to see an instant preview of what it's going to do when it's done. And then you run it and you get a warning, which is really good because I almost screwed up a whole bunch of files that way. And you get a little warning and boom, you say re rename them all and bam, it's gone. And 19 bucks. It may seem steep to you to do a file renaming, but it is really, really well put together. Uh, really, uh, you know, it just does such a great job and it's instant, of course. It's just renaming files, but it's a scary thing to rename files because if you really, you know, especially when you're dealing with hundreds of them, if you do something wrong, you know, getting back to, you know, you're doing something in a finder operation, you're not going to come back to that. So having a good one is really, really useful. If you've ever sat there and had to rename stuff by hand, um, it's really not something you want to do. So anyway, those are, those are my two. Two great picks. Merlin Mann, your pick of the week. Um, I think in outlines, like like a lot of nerds, and I've mentioned before how I like to, uh, uh, I'm well, really Markdown and OPML run a lot of my life. To yes, be honest, yes, um, yes. so much of what I do is in Markdown or multi Markdown, to the point where now OPML and Markdown via text files have become lingua franca for me. Really, and so much of what I do. Uh, and, and what's interesting is I always knew OPML as the thing you use to move your RSS feeds around. But it's, it's amazing how much stuff you can do uh, with things like mind maps or with uh, outlining or whatever. Um, and uh, so, so I have a, I guess my pick in general is OPML and Markdown. No, the specific thing is, I, can, I hope I haven't mentioned this before, but Carbon Fin Outliner, have, no, you, have we talked no, about that? No, no. Um, this is an iPhone and iPad app uh, and the address is Carbon Fin. Dot com. 
And I've played with, uh, I mean, like I say, I really do think in outlines. I sometimes I like mind maps for certain kinds of thinking, but uh, I'm just a slightly more, I guess, what left left brain person where an outliner really does make sense to me. And I got to tell you, on the iPhone, it's tough. Because if you think about the, the gestures that you need in order to do something, there's only a couple apps that, that do. There's like one app that I think does outlining really well. And there's one app that I think does mind maps really, really well. Um, and so Carbon Fin Outliner basically makes it very, I think, very intuitive to just whip through creating an outline, editing an outline. It's slightly modal. So, you know, there's kind of a, there's sort of an entry mode and there's kind of an editing mode. But it's, it becomes intuitive when you use it. Um, and then what that does is... Uh, one of my two bones to pick with the app, <clears throat> which I've actually written to the very nice uh, 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 developer of the app, is I, I do, do wish it had full-on Dropbox integration instead of, uh, it's got its own website, which is an app spot site that you can do syncing through, which is a li little bit clunky, but I think you can also email and stuff. But if you need to do, to do outlining on an iPad or an iPhone, I just, ZeptoLiner is good. Um, there's a handful of them that I think are, are quite good, but to me, this is for now definitely the best one as far as I'm concerned. Do you have now, a mind the, mapping program you like, Ken? Ken Absolutely. Do you want to know? Yeah. I thoughts and I thoughts HD, no question. Uh, I th um, I, I it was a pick for so I was going to have you, another. Would you use one of these or the other of the? I mean, here's here's the thing. You can use both. That's what uh, OPML does. So with I thoughts, the thing that makes I I thought so sexy. If I can just have another second, is I thoughts, especially I thoughts HD on the iPad. Um, it's a beautiful app for doing mind mapping. Right? It's great. You can use the screen. Whatever. A couple editions ago, the, they added this brilliant hack. Where if, say, you're typing inside of a, uh, a box, space, space, space. If you hit space, 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 it adds a daughter. Oh, that's clever. You hit return, 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 it adds a sibling. Oh, I love that. Are you with me? And so I'm now, with you, all baby. of a sudden, this becomes very powerful. And now, you flip over to the little, uh, Justin, help me, what's the doodad? Where you go over to a thing and you get a list on the left. You what's do the called? thing with the thing. The side, the, uh, the list view and the split view. The list view and the split view. Yeah. You go yeah. and you basically hit a button and it syncs with box.net or Dropbox or whatever. It's And basically you just, it. I wish every app did this. You just hit a button and it all just syncs. Now, what's neat is in iThoughts, you can also say, I'm sorry, this is deeply nerdy. But in iThoughts, you can go in and also say, okay, whenever I do this, put it out as a dot... And look mm, what you could I, choose from. Image, free oh yeah, mind, OPML, Nova mind, X mind, mind manager, I mind map, mind view. I mean, all of them. And it spits all of those into your box.net or Dropbox folder, awesome. syncs all of those. And then you could be in any other app that deals with This is what people are not getting. The OPML means you take it anywhere and it just works. So I can take an outline and put it into iThoughts. I can take iThoughts and put it into TextMate. I can take TextMate and put it into Multimarket. What happens or, to the formatting, though? Don't, I mean... Well, by and large, it's a pretty mature, I think, it's a pretty mature uh, standard. So there's, there's, so there's, so there's going to be some kind of interpretation that makes sense, given what your intent was and what the application can do. Yeah, and then, then the, the real sexy for me, I've mentioned this before, is I'm, I'm a big fan of Scrivener, I'm a big fan of TextMate, and uh, Fletcher Penny, the guy who does uh, multi-markdown, has written some fantastic scripts. He's written one, for example, that'll take just indented text in TextMate and turn it into an Omni Outliner outline. Um, you can output everything out of Scrivener. What I'm trying to get at with all of this is between OPML and Markdown, you now have some really powerful ways to round trip between some extremely sophisticated apps. Um, and increasingly, as that stuff does get synced through something like Dropbox, in, in Justin's case, um, I, I, think, I think we're going to a really interesting place where it really is not about the tools anymore. You're removing the friction and just making it really easy to do whatever you've got to do wherever you go. And then my secret, my secret side uh, slide-in uh, recommendation is Justin's app, which is Markdown Mail, which is just, I love to death. It's a terrific app for basically taking Markdown, getting a live preview. I can't believe this is not in every app already, but it makes it very easy to preview your Markdown and then either mail it to somebody or a lot of times what I do is just copy it straight out. So you actually like, write your emails in Markdown? I write everything in, uh, right, right now, just to be honest, I use Simple Note. I write everything in Simple Note and then email it out of Simple Note. Oh, okay. But I'm playing, with, I'm playing with different apps. I'm looking, but, you know, Simple Note works with notational velocity really well. And it's, this is really nerdy. I'm sorry. I'll shut up. But um, anyway. <laughs> we no, 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 we did the Simple Note notational velocity nexus, the axis of OPML. 
on a previous show. I, I think with the you. thing to watch. I think those folks are going to have to watch. What we'll have to watch out for though is is um, just that Simple Note is it's a kind of island. It's an it's a big island that functions very well, but it's still kind of an island right. compared to Dropbox. Um, it's Dropbox kind of a problem in general with the iPad. Well, it's true, and I got to tell you, dude. Every time I run into an app where they're like. <laughs> Did you see, was it Paul? Yeah, I think Paul from Rogue Amoeba had this great post, One Foot Tsunami on his site, about the VLC. Have you launched the VLC app yeah, on the iPad? Yeah, <laughs> And there's like a paragraph of text about how you have to go back to iTunes and do all yeah, this stuff. It's, it's ridiculous, I but that's, that's how you have to do it. That's going to seem funny soon. I think the whole, like, go to iTunes to move a document over. I hope so. I mean, last night, I finally realized last night, I've been trying to look for a way to do PDFs off the iPad, and I finally realized last night I can do that out of pages. It's the only app I've found that does this. But um, I really like that iAnnotate app. That's I'm a really nice app. It's a little pricey, but that is a nice app. It is, but I use it a lot yeah. and uh, for client work. And so you have comments and, and markup and stuff like that. Anyway, I'm ranting on. But I think what I'm, what I'm really ultimately recommending is that users and developers keep encouraging the same pattern, which is the open standards of these different uh, kinds of formats and then ways to sync them uh, hopefully in ways that are not too hard on the servers and the developers but um, I think it's really powerful because it, it gets you out of this whole like I use this app because blah blah and I'm locked into it you're not locked into anything anymore it's with you everywhere it's on my phone if I want to sit on a ledge while I'm waiting for a bus I have 2,000 text files that I can do whatever I want with there's no excuse not to write there's no excuse not to do what you've got to do it's all right there all the you time. carry your iPad with you everywhere or you do this on the iPhone iPhone. I type faster on the iPhone. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I, I like the iPad, but I got one of those giant in-case cases. And it <laughs> yeah, yeah. It folds and fat. <laughs> feels it's like fat. a trifold. Yeah. yeah. But anyway. Thank you, yeah. Merlin Man. Your picks once again. To reiterate, Markdown Mail from Justin. It's nice when you could your pick something. Your check is in the mail, Merlin. Thank you. <laughs> nice when you <laughs> could pick my, something. Thank you, my friend. <laughs> yeah, Make it to cash. cash. <laughs> and, uh, and the outliner was called again, remind me. Carbon Fin Outliner at carbonfin.com. Um, and for some reason, the App Store is being balky about coming up for me, but I don't think it's terribly costly. Anybody want to yell out how much it costs? I'm trying to find it. I think it's $4.99. Oh, fail. Yeah, no, that's awesome. That's totally cheap. Um, it is really I, I cheap. Use, I'll, I'll walk to the grocery store and write on this thing. It's just, it's just so fun to use and so easy. And then also, just to underscore, uh, cfoutliner.appspot.com, I believe, is their syncing site. Spits out OPML, spits out text. Um, and if they, if they add my feature request in the future, it'll also sync with Dropbox. Everything yeah. should sync with Dropbox. And iThoughts. You've got to mention iThoughts and iThoughts HD. It really is. It's, there's a lot of really good mind mapping apps for, the, for these devices. It's really cool. But that's the one that's like, it's got the most interoperability, I think. And I find it easiest to use. So, and then when you're done, go write something. That's the important part. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's nice to have the tools, but if you don't do anything with them. I delete them. Leo, dude, I, I delete them. If, if I'm at the point when I'm fiddling too much, I delete them. Yeah. How's that, how's that for distraction-free yeah. writing? You can get so focused on tools mm -hmm. and not on creating. You know, go make a cabinet. Come on, guys. Uh, Justin, your picks of the week, my friend. All right, I've got two for you today. I have a Mac pick and I have an iOS pick. Okay. So for the Mac pick is, uh, you've probably recommended this before, but I'm a really big fan of Little Snapper from Real Mac Software. Love it. And Little Snapper is a really great application for storing screenshots. And as a developer, I download a ton of software. Like I, I spend probably a hundred bucks or more a month in the app store and then various pieces of Mac software I download. And a lot of the times I'm downloading this stuff sometimes to use, but a lot of times I'll see something in their screenshots and I'll want to be able to archive a bit of that and look at how they're doing UI and I save it all into little snapper. So when I'm sitting here with my various notebooks and I'm sketching out things, I'll go into my little snapper archive, which has thousands of screenshots of iPad, Mac, and I iPhone apps, and I'll just start looking at things as like, wow, what this guy did is a really good idea, or what this guy did, or a couple of months ago when I was working on today, too, I was trying to think about how I wanted to redesign the registration screen, and so in Little Snapper, I have various different screenshots from various apps that are tagged as registration windows, and I just went and I looked, and I had, I think, 15 or 20 different apps that did it in different ways, and it's just a really great way for me to just jog my memory of different apps I've seen without having to go and re-download them all again. So, Little Snapper, I think it's I think it's 30 bucks, and then it also syncs with their Ember service, which 
I think if you buy a subscription, that's free for a year and they have a free plan for that as well. But for the most part, I'm just keeping all that stuff stored on my Mac just so that I can reference it whenever I'm doing my development work. So if you're into that stuff, check that out. My iOS pick is a new app that's just come out that I've been beta testing for a while. And this is a little bit of a selfish pick in that the developer is uh, Patrick Burleson of BitBQ Software. And he's a really great developer. He's a poor guy who has to do Windows development during the day, but we'll, we'll leave it at that. But I've always wanted an app for Netflix. I'm a big Netflix guy. This I've just always... came out. I'm so excited about this. Oh, yeah. I just got an email about this. Yeah. 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 So I've been bugging Patrick, and he's been listening to me complain for months and months about how I don't like any of the Netflix apps on the App Store. And I said, the only thing I ever want out of an app on the for dealing with Netflix is I want to be able to open it, search for the movie that someone just re recommended to me, yep. and click add and to my added. list. Yep. That's it. And Patrick went and he took the idea and he built that app and it's called QUP and it's two bucks in the store. And I've been testing it for a while and it's now my default Netflix app on my phone because when I'm on my phone, I don't need to rearrange my queue. I don't need to see the top 100 recommendations for me. All I want to do is I want to just add movies that someone recommended to me right on the go. And this does a really great job of it without getting in my way. Great well, timely. I think the other thing to get to get back to what Merlin and Andy were talking about. The problem for me with Netflix is, is that I go up there and they say, "If you like this, you'd like this," and yeah. that's like another half an hour, right? And, and like oh, yh, forty-five absolutely. more movies. Talk about distractions. <laughs> I'm like, oh, catnip. I have to say, I do on the iPad. I use a Netflix app, and uh, it's really just a portal to the web page. That's magic. That app is magic. But it's nice to have. I'll tell you, to be able yeah. to watch those view now on the on the iPad. But I can't believe how fast it is, and you just hit it, and you're watching Thirty Rock in bed. It's just, it's so like the future to me. <laughs> I'd like to hit that. Mm, well, I, mean, I was <laughs> I was going to... Thank you, Justin, for your uh, recommendations. You. And I good, think we would really be rem picks. remiss if we did not mention secondgearsoftware.com. Justin's great apps. We talked about Element uh, Elements. Uh, then uh, also about uh, Today, which is a fantastic uh, kind of to-do list task manager. Uh, Markdown Mail. And then there's one more. The there's simple, Check Off, which check is off. the little mini to-do list. Little Check Off. We always love, we love <laughs> There's the Russian. There, there we go. <laughs> uh, so, um, I, you know, I have mixed feelings, actually, about my recommendation. While on the one hand, I was thrilled when yesterday the folks at Condi and Ast finally said, yes, we're going to do an iPad app for the New Yorker. Then a little disappointed to find out that even as a New Yorker subscriber, I have to pay $4.99 an issue. Each and every issue that comes out, but they have done as a, a subscriber. Yeah, really. There's no deal, uh, but they're doing a nice job of it. This is uh, this is the new New Yorker app, which just came out. Um, you get the you get the full app, full magazine in a, in a kind of a nice format. If you want to read, you just scroll through it. It does have ads in it. Uh, the ad, pretty much the same ads I think uh, that are in the. Uh, in the magazine itself, it's in it's in exactly the same typeface. You kind of really feel like you're reading the New Yorker. Um, there's another ad. The, the the original the original ads or ads. It looks like it's the, the same. It looks like it's the magazine converted. Okay, well that's 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 okay. I mean, okay. I I, I was imagining that you hey subscribers pay four ninety five plus we've added these i ads. Additional or yeah, that doesn't seem to be i ads. There are some nice features. For instance. Um, uh, if you go, if I go back to the homepage, uh, it's a David Hockney cover uh, this week, and you can actually see a video, a little special feature out of David drawing the cover. So now that's awesome. That's totally nice. I mean, that that's a very nice value add. It does, by the way, do landscape and portrait mode, which is also uh, very <laughs> nice. Um, animations for some of the cartoons. Look, I'm a fan of The New Yorker. I read it religiously. I am a subscriber. I get the paper edition, but my wife and daughter steal it every single time it comes. So, you know, I don't think I'll probably buy every issue since I'm going to have every issue at home. But the ability when I'm at the airport or whatever to buy an issue of The New Yorker uh, for $4.99 and have it on the plane flight is, is, is a good thing. So I thought I'd mention it. Uh, I'm not thrilled that they aren't, you know, that they're not giving a deal, by the way. <laughs> This is pretty cool. Jason, oh, Jason, Jason so Schwartzman good. does the explanation of how to use the New Yorker. It's delightful. <laughs> application. I think that's on YouTube. I've seen links on Twitter uh, for it. So Directed by uh, Roman Coppola. Yeah, isn't that amazing? Like, mm -hmm. the New Yorker wastes no... Uh, it no reminds me of that Wes Anderson American Express commercial, one of my all-time favorite commercials. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> it's delightful. Absolutely. 
Yep. So can you actually work with the text in this app no, or is it no like every other magazine app? And every you can other one. It's it. really frustrating. I at least was hoping for cut and paste so I could, you know, tweet. Like there's a yep. great article this week. Um, I'm not sure I agree with it, but Malcolm Gladwell has an article about how Twitter is great for the status quo, but doesn't is not going to initiate any uh, great change. Uh, why the revolution will not be tweeted, he says. And it's a, it's a stimulating article that I'm not sure I fully agree with. And I would was going to cut a little bit of it out and tweet it and say you should read it and I can't you can't yeah can't. that's what has always frustrated me because there was I I subscribe to the Sports Illustrated and Same every thing. now and then I'll download it onto yep. my iPad and there's always going to be like a little passage that I'll want to reference on my Facebook or through Twitter and I can't because these sort of functionalities aren't built into these applications and I I assume that's the old media thinking coming out in these apps but right. I wish it isn't, was isn't a lot it more jarring apps. though I mean I, I that's become such a muscle memory for me Instapaper is in my fingers like Command exactly. Q at exactly. this point. It's, it's yeah. I, you know, and for me, Reader, in Reader, the combination of Reader, Instapaper, and my text app, uh, you know, I'm just flying between those and Pastebot all day long, you know? And it's so funny when you hit something, you're like, wait a minute, it didn't move. Right. It didn't grab anything. Oh, yeah. And it seems so retrograde. You know? I, I do have to say that if you are a fan of the magazine, this is about as close as you're going to come to actually reading the magazine. They preserve the typeface. They preserve a lot of the feel. It's much better than the web version of the uh, magazine, which is basically a PDF um, I, I have mixed feelings about this, but I had to mention it because I know uh, fans of the magazine, as I am, have been waiting for this uh, for some time. And yes, they could do it better. And yes, they could give subscribers at least give us a deal. We already pay for the damn magazine. Uh, but, mm -hmm. you know, it's pretty. It's nice to see this. And I love it. If you read if and there are some people I know who read The New Yorker just for the pictures. If you are that kind of person, you can't actually click any cartoon and it'll, it'll go to the slideshow of all the cartoons and then you're done. So, um, and you don't have to insert one of six DVDs. <laughs> That's another. <laughs> Do you remember uh, that? Uh, yes. Did, did you have that? I yes. got that as an NPR yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, premium. And it was like, oh, so you'd like to read this, uh, whatever this Robert Go Sherman DVD article. 17. Yeah. Please locate DVD. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, I hated that. And, uh, you know, that you have a library on here. I, I presume that the space available, you can, you can keep all of your old New Yorkers on here, which. I, I, so when I see something like this, Ilya, I'm with you. I think it's beautiful. Ain't this or the the new uh, the new food thing Andre worked on mm -hmm. the gourmet deal or whatever? Mm -hmm. It's great. I'm glad these are all beautiful. These are beautiful. In this case, with the New Yorker one, though, I, I always when I see something that, like this, I always ask, I want to ask myself, um, is this this obviously it, it's as good, it's as good as they're going to do for now? But right. is this going to bring them new readers, no. or is it going to sort of placate the ones they've it's already got? It's a, it's and I think it's the NPR problem, with yeah. all respect to my friends who work there, and, and the PBS problem, is that they're still burning cycles on people who, by necessity of existence, are not going to be their fans in 30 years. Uh, CBS, yeah. the CBS problem. It's like, how are you going to go and attract people who are going to click that once, discover that there's no cursor focal, and we're going to close it and never open it again? Is that an edge case? It is today, but it may not be in a couple of years. You know, I, I, you know, I just always wonder, like, who do you think is doing that really well right now? Is there anybody that's really, really, really in front of this, not just on the way it looks, but in terms of how you can munge it? I mean, I think what Paul Ford did with Harper's was pretty. Some of the stuff he's done with Harper's is great. Popular science. Once you pay no. for Harper's, it's all, it's all right. there. Yeah. Did you, did you play with? Did you like the Popular Science? No, it was, be it was an example of beautiful, but completely opaque as far as UI goes. I, I was like so frustrated with it. I, now when I see it on the, uh, it, it, it like my hand hurts just when I see it on iTunes. I'm just like, ah, ah, ah. You know, I just, that makes me upset. Yeah. Well, there you go. There you have it. A fabulous show once again. Thank you so much, Alex Lindsay. I know you have to pack. He's headed off for parts unknown. Hey, I got a couple things, though. Uh, one is uh, we got more seats for the iOS class, if anyone's interested. Oh, good. Uh, so go, to, go to Big Nerd. We so, it sold out like that day. <laughs> the one I, when I talked about it on Mac Breaks. So we got a bigger place uh, that's near the, near the office. And so, so we've got a couple, like five or six more seats. So it'll be, you know, but definitely go over and check that out uh, at uh, BigNerdRanch.com. And also, if you are interested in playing around with really well shot and funny uh, green screens go up to dbgarage.com uh, we have this shots of the ninja so we shot all this stuff on a red i put it into apple pro res 4x4 there's also an iMovie version that you can play with and uh and it's just you know if you even if you just want to play with the place you don't want to build an open but you can try to build an open there's the music there there's instructions uh but it's just the the plates are so much fun to do to, if, you, if you want to play around with key and i put some tutorials up on how to do it we released. Where, where is it? So I'm at dvgarage.com. Look at the bottom and click on the. Uh, there's, you'll see an ask, ask a ninja. ninja. There it is. Okay. So here's the section here, and 
Um, what we did is we made ninja versions of Conduit and DBMAT Pro, so you can download them. They're fully operational for the next week so that you can play with them. Uh, there's tutorials that I, that I did on how to, uh, you know, how to key the ninja. Uh, in, in, uh, you Forget know. Ask a Ninja. Key the Ninja. Yeah, key the ninja. So, so the, the idea is is that you even if you just want to learn a little bit about green screen, uh, learn a little bit about how to do this stuff in a couple different ways, uh, even in iMovie, which I think a lot of people don't even know it does green screen. And so it does. Uh, yeah, iMovie does great green screen. What? And, uh, I didn't know yeah, that. so I have. There's a tutorial. You watch the tutorial. You'll see it. it this is uh, this is how to use conduit, um, let me, which let is me our. Go back and watch the tutorial on. Uh, so you have a tutorial on. Um, on how to pull green screen in, in, in iMovie. Oh, wow. Cool. Wow. And, uh, and, and so, I just um, thought you, iMovie frustrated people. Yeah. Didn't, you know, it's, it actually has probably one of the best easy keyers in the world. Oh, wait, I, do, I did. That. I used it once for that stupid. Actually, the stupid video you linked to a couple of weeks ago, I deliberately made the worst looking green screen matting ever. <laughs> but it was all, all about my doing. You're right, Alex. If you've got a nice, clean uh, uh, color behind you, it, it does work. Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's one of those things that you just, you have to turn on the advanced tool. That's like the key piece of it. Once you turn on that show advanced uh, settings, uh, you can yeah. simply drag it on. It says, do you want to make that, a, you know, it's one of the options is to make it a green screen. And uh, yeah, the tutorial for iMovie was the shortest one. It was like 45 seconds or something or a minute because it was like, okay, and then you add it and you say, I want a green screen and then it's done. You know, you go, here we go. Watch this. this here's all the settings. Green screen. Green screen. And, and he's, he's on a red, red background, but he could you know, be just, on uh, it, Paris. It's, and so anyway, so and a lot of wow, people don't even know that good. exists. And so we we had a lot of fun with it. Uh, we're having a lot of fun with it this week. Um, <clears throat> and uh, you can uh, check out more there on dvgarage.com. It's just, I, you know, I could uh, it, the, the footage turned out so well. You know, it was, it was kind of off the off the cuff that Kent and I, you know, start schemed to bring the ninja in. And uh, and, it, and the footage came out really, really well. I, hopefully people will come check it out. Even if you just want to play with some great green screen plates, um, it's just a great place to go. So check it out. Very good. DVGarage.com. Alex Lindsay is at the PixelCore, PixelCore.com, to join his Guild of Multimedia Artists, PixelCore.tv, for their many fine podcasts. Uh, Justin, we want to thank you so much for being here. Justin Williams. Thank you for having me. Is at SecondGearSoftware.com. Any, any other things you'd like to plug besides those great programs today? And uh, SecondGearSoftware.com. And if you want to help me fight the believers, you can follow me on Twitter at Twitter.com slash Justin. <laughs> Did you pay for that, or did, were you just were you there so early that you got just? I I've been there since July of 2006, so I got in oh, there wow. pretty early. Oh, you were really early. How yeah, did I that was really happen? early. I just I had a friend who got on, and he signed. That's I signed almost up before him. it was like public. And it was a great idea at the time, and then about a year and a half ago, this little teen boy from Canada Damn. came along, and it's just Damn. been fun ever since. So, I, actually, if you if if there's anyone out there in MacBreak Weekly Land, who is frustrated by their Twitter followers. I will mention I have a little side project I do. So if you go to uh, carpeaqua.com slash projects, I have a Safari extension called, uh, I think it's called Twitter Filter Twitter. And it uh, lets you input any w keyword that you want to block, and it'll hide it in your mentions and your Twitter timeline. So uh, It's like regular on, expressions for people. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I, I set up one for the many different spellings of Bieber. So when I go on Twitter.com now, I no longer see them in my <laughs> many mentions. Many spellings of Bieber. Yes. Uh, by nice. the way, I didn't know this, but you do a podcast called IRQ Conflict, which for Mac people will be completely opaque, but those of us who've ever used a PC will immediately go, ah! Oh! Yeah, you that is my, uh, it's a little it's a little hobby I do. It's That's a 10-minute awesome. show. Five topics, about two minutes each, between me, a Mac guy, and my friend Michael Berger, who is a very good .NET developer here in Indiana. Fantastic. So we kind of have the Mac perspective and the .NET perspective. That's great, and Justin. That's a really neat idea. Yeah. We'd love to have you back on the show, Justin. It was just really great to have you, and you've got a good microphone, which always is Thank a plus. Thank you. I'll be, I'll be here as, whenever you have me. Have your people good. call my people. Your people and my people will, will interface. Mr. Merlin, man, you're a god, just a god. Everyone knows it. Why, why would you say something like that, Leo? Because well, you are. Awful thing because say. you are. Really? I'm no. mad for you. Forty-three. No, you're, you're the you're the guy. You're the guy, Leo. Forty-three you. folders, about... which he doesn't really write much for, but if he did, it would be there. I'm working on a post right now about how it was really hard to not check my email for a long time. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> no, I'm serious. You ever try it? People, people just like. Rrr. No, no, I couldn't. I don't even want to try. Yeah, yeah. Well, you got you got your got your you know. I got to help her now. And yeah, I got to help her. She does that for me. You look She's nice today.com is the fabulous, fabulous podcast. It's actually the, the funniest podcast on the internet. He does it with, uh, with Lonely Sandwich. 
And the thing uh, I update the most is uh, if you're curious, and I don't mean to pimp it, but like, um, actually, don't follow me on Twitter. But uh, Twitter, Kung Fu Grip is my blog, and I I post a lot what of videos. What happened? Wait a minute. The last you look nice today is May. Are you? Is it? Yeah, are know, you on hiatus? What's going on? You know, it's I. It's 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 a lot of work. Not mine. Not on my part. I just show up and I. No, sandwich I, has to I, edit it. Have a bottle of wine. Yeah. And, Make boner jokes, but uh, Adam's yeah, got a lot of, of work to do. So, and and Scott's a, now in God France shit. or something. The paper company moved him to France or Switzerland or somewhere, didn't he? Uh, you know, I just find out when he needs me. He puts a flag. He puts a little like a, a little American flag in a flower pot, and that means he wants to talk to me. And I, I go, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of all the presidents, man, fans. But um, Kung uh, Fu Grip is spelled G R I P P E. Yeah. Dot com, and that's uh, Merlin's tumble log. Hey, thanks, thanks for saying those nice things, Leo. That's really cool oh, of you. you know, I'm just that. trying to get you to come back. That's all. Oh, no, I'm here, and I'm scheduled for next week, too. Yay! Yeah. People will be happy to hear that. <laughs> sorry, sorry, that one guy on Twitter. Well, there's that one guy, but, you know, other than that, people will be no, happy to hear that. No, but this is a joy. Thank you, Merlin. Thank you all for being here. We do this show live every Tuesday at 11 a.m. Pacific. That's 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1800 UTC. You can watch all our shows done live, live.twit.tv. If you go to live.twit.tv, you'll see a calendar drop down there, and you can press that, and you'll see what's scheduled for when. For instance, we're debuting our Green Tech show tonight. What time is that? Five, right? Oh, we did already do that. Never mind. Next Monday. It was a great show, Leo. It actually was a good show. So watch next Monday. We'll have another one. Tonight at 4 o'clock, um, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, I'm interviewing Don Tapscott. His new macroeconomics book just came out. He's the guy who coined the term uh, Internet Natives and uh, Digital Natives, I guess he calls them, and a fascinating guy. So Don will join us to talk about how the, uh, how the, f the, the future lies with the people, with the young people and the, and the thing. The giving and the and thing. The giving and the thing. Thank you all for being here. We'll get you back to work now. Break time is over. Have a great trip to Japan, Alex Lindsay. I will. I'll see you in two weeks. Take care, everybody.